<laughs> I'm slightly stressed out later. <laughs> it's like, do we, don't we? We're going to do it. <laughs> I like I'm, it. I'm, I'm going to commit to it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's just a scratch and butt cam. No, I think it's just a flare from the uh, Atalanta light. Mm. I was like, I hope there's no scratch. Not a scratch. No. Maybe one of the orby things. <laughs> yeah. Do we have like a water thing the other day? There's mm. nothing like a scratch on here. <laughs> we really created a scratch that camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking about, hmm, that's an interesting itch to scratch. <laughs> like a bear on a tree. <laughs> <laughs> Except more that uh, booty scooch. Yeah, right. <laughs> They're booty scooching up that tree. <laughs> oh, I love that term so much. <laughs> a lot more of those squiggles. Yeah. Yeah. All over these rocks. Some highly active squigglers. <laughs> it's just a bunch of kindergartners down here. What do you guys yeah. think this is right here? Just rock? I think that's a oh, sea cucumber. Maybe sea cucumber. Looks like a sea cucumber. Could also just be a piece of rock sticking out. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> We're starting to see things now. <laughs> Set of it really What's that shadow? <laughs> All these rocks, and we just can't grab them. Because I know. <laughs> that's okay. Rocks, rocks everywhere, and not a rock to keep. Yep, <laughs> exactly. Man, we are trucking now. I like how all these are kind of structured together. What's that all about? Um, so this looks like uh, it's a mirroring a lot of the original uh, uh, lava flow structure. So it's just like stacks of uh, pillow basalts that have been broken off. Because uh, you can kind of see like right here, that looks like a broken face. But then it's just like thickly encrusted with the manganese. Makes it look kind of indistinct. We passed another sea cucumber. We passed two sea cucumbers, a couple sea pens. For this next move, Solomon, can we make it yep. at 0.3 as we go on those depth contours? 50 meters at 0.3 speed. Here's some of that okay. encrusted Bridge, this is sponge. Another move, 0 0.55, 50 meters, speed 0 0.3 knot. Yes, please. I think that abyss of pathies is going to be so hard to see in this. Yeah. Probably. Oh, and another one right here. Yeah, you can see this pillow was broken open and drained out. But again, you're losing a lot of that vertical like jointing structure and a lot of that internal structure that we were seeing on some of these other dives where we could... Uh, uh, see the broken off lava flows. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's just been sitting here for tens of million years on the seafloor, just uh, getting crusty. <laughs> Happens to the best of us. Yep. So it looks like our video went out for a few seconds. Hopefully it's back. If you continue to have issues, please let us know. We can report those in. Yep, we've been... Uh, actively working to get that uh, video issue resolved. Yeah, so it's also just looking at uh, where things have broken off around here. It tells us that a lot of that um, uh, rock huh? wasting has uh, that happened okay. earlier in the uh, Bridge, this is now uh, make the speed 0 0.4 not please thank you alright so we can speed up again now that we're in slightly uh, flatter area so yeah, I'm seeing a lot of evidence of, uh, you know, some wasting uh, along these slopes. Uh, uh, 
perhaps some sort of slumping. And this this happened uh, earlier in the uh, the history of this uh, this particular seamount, and uh, I don't see a lot of evidence of um, younger activity. Looking at uh, uh, how everything's uh, uh, covered with that uh, ferromanganese. So for those of you who have recently joined us, we are diving the Nuka Seamount, um, kind of a really deep, shorter dive. And this is part of um, Expedition NA-138, Lu'ua'ea Ahiki'ike Kumo, which is uh, kind of a culmination of uh, mapping and exploration efforts that occurred at the end of 2021. So um, we've been diving on the Lilukalani Seamount Bridge, the ridges, or the seamounts within these ridges, and kind of spending time looking at um, geology a lot, um, trying to get a sense of the age and, and chemical composition of these lavas, and um, also these ferromanganese crusts um, to get a sense of the uh, microbiome that's there. We've also had just incredible biology going on pretty much every dive oh yeah we're so deep here it's a lot sparser but we're still seeing occasional critters i'm still surprised at how big the sponges are getting at this depth like that that's a little counterintuitive to me but maybe maybe i'm not thinking about it the right way either i've been noticing the oxygen concentrations are higher than any of our other dives that we've seen very true. Kind Are we still step. over 100 micromole per liter? Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, yeah, we are. It's been pretty steady. Uh, let's take a look at the last few hours. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been, been pretty steady. Pretty stable, yeah. Around 100, 506 micromoles per liter. Yeah. We uh, recently collected a small sample uh, branch from a uh, primnoid believed to be Norella. Yeah, Norella, or um, if potentially a, a new species, but it was definitely at a depth range that hadn't been, been uh, recorded before. Keep moving. We had to backtrack a little bit, so we appreciated the, uh, the full viewer team that helped us uh, go back Do to the hold in waypoint three or just keep moving? Um, let's, let's keep moving. Looking for some rocks? Yes, but I don't trust these. Bridge, this is Nav. Once bitten, twice shy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another move bearing zero six zero. Fifty meters, uh, speed zero point four. Yes, please. Zero six zero. Roger. That Roger. just looks like crust. I think you're right about that. Yeah. Yeah. A lot so of these are quite round and blobby, so yeah. they're probably stuck. So back row. Um, as we kind of book along here, um, if you start to see that we're in a zone that uh, is of interest, the um, we'll have to. We'll, you can let us know. We'll stop the ship, and then we'll, we'll have to keep flying for about 100 meters or so. Okay. So if it's starting to look like a zone that you're interested in, uh, let us know right away. We'll, we can stop the ship as quickly as possible, and hopefully that we swing into that Absolutely. same Absolutely. Thanks yep. for the heads up on that. Yeah, yep. I kind of figured swinging would be an issue. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do the best we can with that. Raj! Wow, I'm getting in some big stuff here. Yeah. Yeah, you see, you see all of this. It's just like, this is all just like, stuff that's just broken and tumbled and it's just it did that a long time ago uh, look at how this built up right here that's kind of weird oh yeah it's like a little uh stalagmite almost they're not a true stalagmite it can't form the same way that uh 
Yeah, things do in uh, caves. We are not spelunking today. We don't need to stop. I just pointed out this weird stuff right here and right here. Is that just rock? And uh, just I think those are just little like nodules that are kind of growing in place. Yeah, the sediment really changes the look of things, doesn't it? It does. And also, I, I, I think we've really been thrown off because our, our brains are so attuned to uh, the crust looking a certain way that now that just those those crustal features, uh, botryoids, are so much larger down here that it's it's making us think that things are uh, smaller than they are. Mm. Yeah, this all looks stuck. Kind of thinking just above waypoint four might be a good place to go poke some rocks. Just kind of looking at the uh, uh, looking at high pack. So we'll uh, we'll evaluate on the fly, see what it looks okay. like leading up to that. Okay. In fact, that actually works out because we're coming up on a similar. Uh, bathymetric feature, so if it looks promising along this feature, we can anticipate the next. Yeah, if it's anything like this, I, it looks like there'd be at least a couple loose ones in there, but I don't know. I agree. So, yeah, let's, uh, yeah, I think uh, once we hit waypoint four, we, uh, we might pause the ship and uh, let the ROV swing and see if uh, we see a similar kind of field like this to poke for something loose. Sure thing. Yeah. Waypoint four. Cool. I think that's about as much as we can anticipate at this point. <laughs> Looks like a black coral right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just normal bathopathies. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we are. Uh, we were requested to look for an abyssopathies. If anybody wants to look that up, it's it's a similar shape as the uh, bathopathies we've been seeing, but more of a transparency white. So I think it's going to be a little hard to see. So more eyes never hurts. And that's a black coral. There's another public bathopathies there. I don't know how you spot this stuff so rapidly. Mm -hmm. I'm just like looking at everything. That's probably my problem, is I'm I looking at everything. I probably look at the, the rocks a little Chairman less. Chairman, the you. speed. Yeah, yeah. true. Press this is nav, and that's the move, same step. Got it. <laughs> do you mind, mind showing me on high pack where the vehicles are, please? I don't know if we have any time, but if we can maybe zoom on one of those black corals as we pass by. Yeah, yeah do we? I'll, I'll get further ahead and then sure. Uh, yeah, that might be a good one to zoom on. Yeah. Get some footage. Yeah, at least documented it. This is reminiscent of our uh, first dive when the weather was a little iffy and we're just like, okay, we're going to hit these objectives. Let's go. Mm hmm. Let's move. Go ahead push on in there, please. Nice. Oh, that's pretty. It is pretty. All right, I'm going to need to go full okay. wide, please. Thanks for that. Yep. I can see the shadow there again, the, the porch. <laughs> cool. That primnoid was just that one solo 
big fan. <laughs> We've yeah. been seeing some smaller coral like this branching, but not a lot else. I guess that's a little bigger. Yeah. I don't know if that's also a primnoid. What do you think this one is, Leela? Roger, a thank little you. Hard to tell. Sea yeah. pen. Sea pen again? Oh, yeah. It's pretty firmly yeah. in the sediment. Look in the sediment, yeah. That's all right. Yeah, I'm liking how the rocks look on this uh, this kind of landform. So yeah, uh, dispel waypoint four is going to be a good. Uh, I think we may get lucky there, but I could be fooled again. These are very deceptive rocks today. I'm giving them all the side eye. Wow, this is quite consolidated. It is. Here's another small. Coral. It's so overgrown. Wow. What is that? One of our cool yeah. anemones there, I think. I'm, I'm just pointing things out, so don't pay attention to me for no real. worries. <laughs> it's helpful. Yeah. Oh, do you guys do your thing? If there is something that you guys really want to zoom in on, because um, I, I just want to maintain stretching out, because we have, uh, we have a rise coming to a front. So I only have about 30 seconds for a zoom, and then I okay. have to run back in front with the Sounds speed. good. Great. Next one will be on 070. 070, Raj. So we have a deeper dive than we have been doing. Uh, we're at 3,336 meters currently. This is not next move, 070, 50 meters. There's another little black coral. Maybe not so little. Mm, oh, yeah. Oh, sure enough. Our maximum depth for a bigger one. for Hercules is 4,000 meters, so we're within that. Argus and I presume Atalanta can both go, I think Atalanta too, right? Can both go 6,000? 6, 6,000, yeah. What can Little Herc do? Is Little Herc a little deeper? I don't know. I've never Not used Little Herc. Not 6,000, but then Big Herc. I would imagine I still 4,000. Yeah. Because I, I would imagine, well, I don't know, right? But I, j I, I really just don't know. But I, I would guess that, like, a lot of the sensors are swapped between Big Herc and Little Herc. And, like, mm -hmm. it's mostly the pressure housings and stuff that um, mm -hmm. are the limiting factor. In the foam pack. And the, yeah, the foam pack, the rating of the foam pack. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if it goes deeper. If we went that deep uh, and then, you know, came back up and you were resetting for a new dive, would you need to change anything out or? Like, so, for example, sometimes we change out the bubble because there's a 3,000 um, meter rated one and there's a 6,000 meter rated one. So for... Um, when we had water in the camera, like a drop um, oh, yeah. in it, we swapped to the shallow one while we could, while we were doing shallower dives. And then once we started going deep again and the, the camera had been serviced, um, we put the deep one back on. So we do that. We do that uh, yeah. regularly. Little white sea star. Wow, big intact pillow flow here. It almost looks like a like a sheet flow, but if you look on the edges, you can see uh, the, where the pillows broke off, which is like w one of the only ways you can tell that this is a stack of pillow lavas. Because yeah, it looks like a lot of the features have just been grown over. Could we um, maybe have like a quick zoom on one of these corals, like the one on the left as we pass by? This one right here? Yeah. Yeah. We've been seeing a bunch of these, just want to document what it is. Good call. We may already have earlier, but. We're about All to. Right, go ahead and push on in, please. Come a little wide. Mm. That's good. 
Cool. Mm. One of our viewers just mm. pointed out. Thank you. Yeah, sure thing. The Little Herc Go website wait. says it goes to 6,000 6, meters. 6,000, okay. Cool. Get a, access to a lot more ocean bottom with ratings to that depth. Here's some tiny little individual polyps of some sort. Oh, yeah. yeah. They almost look like um, Anthemastis recruits. And another fun anemone down there. Yeah, a lot of anemones uh, this deep. We seem to have uh, uh, moved out of uh, where the sponges were uh, more abundant. Possibly. It could just be that we're simply not seeing them, too, because um, I think we saw a couple on the slopes. We saw a couple a little further down, but not so much in the flatter area. Yeah, I think when we were doing a ship to shore, we were talking to the students. Think about it like you're walking through kind of up a mountain with forest, and you have a flashlight in the dark. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Basically, you're seeing what you could see in your flashlight band. Yeah, because the field of view that we get on the cameras is not quite as wide as what we Bridget, uh, this is now another move, Sam Step. Yeah, it's not as wide as what we normally get um, with our own uh, vision. With our periphery, I think we can see quite a bit around us, and uh, uh, we get spoiled by that, so. Herc is a little bit more um, narrow in its focus. Tiny little crinoid, it looks like. Oh, that's an interesting Or something else, maybe. What no, 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 that's it. You have good eyes. Mm. Well, you're kind of busy driving. <laughs> well, I'm looking over there, too, and I just, I'm just my eyes, I just they can't focus on things that small. Is that some sort of a hold fast there? Or are we just seeing other growths? It looks like part of the rock pattern. <laughs> I don't know. It's so circular. Here's another bunch. It's just a texturally, there's different surface things going on with this uh, crust. Cool at a length of view. Oh, yeah. Like oh, the, that is so cool. So big scale. We're on yeah. like a ginormous botrytal <laughs> piece. Yeah. yeah. This is a cool <laughs> picture. Look at that. Oh, wow. That's a great shot, Lila. Mm -hmm. Pile of pillows. <laughs> oh, there's a bunch of stock. Okay, so there, th there were oh. at least were sponges oh, growing around here. Not is that a sponge? I think that's it's just, I think it's a sponge stock. Two branches. A little crying oh, next to it. Two next to each other. What is that? It looks like a sparse branching thing. Oh, uh, I was looking at the stock. Thing on the ground. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. we're looking at different. Yeah, things. it just went out of the field of view. It's in the bubble cam. Oh yeah, got it. Sponge stock. That's coral looks like. Yeah. Haven't seen a black coral in a minute. I feel like I'm speed racer right now. Here's another little individual polyp of something. Well, there's yeah. Yeah. Whatever that that small branching is. Seems to be fairly consistently scattered yeah. about. Yep. So we are climbing up Nootka Seamount. This is our first dive, so I think we're the first ones to ever explore here. Moving up to. There? Oh, oh I see it now. Just coral, yeah. Yeah. Headed for the fourth of five waypoints on our planned trip. I wonder if that is octocoral. It, yeah, we should. I mean, uh, next time we see one, try coral. and get a quick zoom on that. It looks like mushroom coral, but it's super hard to tell. Oh, we got yeah. back here. We've got a few things. Yeah, here, here, over here. Yeah. That weird encrusted dead sponge. <laughs> wow, this is quite a little field. Hmm. Yeah slightly different local bathymetry there that maybe was advantageous. So these pillows look like they kind of collapsed in on themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Drained out a little bit. Quite large over here. 
All right, so it looks like we're starting to move into potential rock territory. Um, I want to get a little bit closer to waypoint four, though, I think. Yeah, because we're all the way over there. We're yeah. still at waypoint three now. Yeah, um, Yeah, because we're getting on to that uh, plateau area. Yes, yeah, okay. so, so Becker, we have about 150 meters at least of layback, so uh, we w how about we plan to stop the ship after this ship move? Um, which will take us almost to waypoint four if you're interested in these rocks, or we can aim to get to waypoint four and then swing, uh, and then be right on waypoint four for the rock sample. Which would you prefer? Uh, let's look for rocks uh, at waypoint four. Okay. <clears throat> I think that'll be uh, the most judici judicious use of our time. Great. Okay, so we'll keep moving. Yeah. Keep moving. Bridge, this is now another move, same step. Yeah, I'm trying to take advantage of some of the similar bathymetry Above waypoint three and above waypoint four to sure. give us a preview so we can try to anticipate. Yeah, no saddle points to take advantage of on this one. God, it is so crusty. <laughs> I mean, those are, I wonder how thick that is. Uh, meter scale across. Hard to say what it is on the inside, though, but yeah. that looks like where some of the crust is flaked off a little bit, mm. and you can see it's pretty thick. Big crinoid again. star. I think, is that those Brissingid stars? Oh, maybe. Where is that? Oh, we passed it. It's a oh, there is a white. Here. There is a white black coral just now. This is all white black coral. You see that? Oh, yeah. where? But I don't think that it's the abyssopathies, but like going out of frame right now. It was big. There uh, were multiple. The abyssopathies is supposed to be smaller, right? I think it has a different shape to it too. Yeah. Go ahead, Bridge. Actually, very hard to tell. Small colony, less than ten centimeters tall. Okay. So it's going to be hard to Copy spot. Copy that, Bridge. We're done. Thank you. There is a change to 065. Uh, 065 of the ship's heading, not the our uh, bearing. Roger. Great, thank you. Okay, yeah, it is going to be hard to spot. More of those same little sea stars, the white ones. Yeah, those mm, have been yeah. kind of randomly all over the place. Yep. Maybe we could, in the future, have a zoom on one of the sea stars. Sure. One of those little cookie stars down there? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, they got a zoom on one last watch, Oh, they too, did? Okay. So. so you guys don't want one? To uh, that, I think we're good. We're probably fine. I think that's the same species we've been seeing the whole time. Roger that. We had a new viewer asking if we're able to stop the drone and and uh, move for a closer look. We are uh, able, but right now we are trying to make up some ground after we backtrack to catch a, a sample of something we uh, have never seen at this depth. And we have a, a dive plan that has us getting to a certain point by the end of our dive. If we can make it. If we can make it. So our Fauna so is a little sparse here, so we're trying to make up some ground and see what's over the next uh, the next rise. Yeah, sparse fauna, um, rocks that are quite hard to sample because they are actually uh, uh, crusted to the substrate, so we can't uh, we can't um, pick them up. They are stuck. Oh, there's a big sea pen. Yeah, looks like it has an associate too. Uh, probably a brittle star. Sometimes I wonder about the drone nomenclature. Because I, when I hear drone, I think of something autonomous. And I don't know that that is, like, industry-wide. Or what, I don't know if that is, tra is because it translates also into some, like, aerial um, verbiage. But in general, I would not call these vehicles drones. Yeah, that's interesting. Aerial drones are not necessarily autonomous, yeah. but I wonder if there's a there's a difference in marine applications. Yeah. Uh, but I, I don't think of these as drones either, yeah. even though they're, I mean, functionally very similar to an aerial drone. Mm. 
Did you guys want to zoom on well, this one? I think we're good. We've, we've oh, okay. We've that is a very purple sea cucumber. <laughs> oh, sea cucumber. Oh, though, I almost missed sure. it. Yeah. Oh my this gosh. This is now another move. Zero seven. Zoom zero. On sea cucumber. Thirty oh, meters. Three that's zero meters. That's kind of like the ones we saw at the very beginning of this dive. That was very large. Yep. That was big though. Or this like will be our last move. Then we'll hold. Roger. I wouldn't call an aerial drone an ROV. Right. Right. <laughs> right. That's true. Even though it's a it, remotely operated something. Yeah. 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 Jeremy uh, says untethered are drones like AUVs. Ooh, so that's that an interesting sense. differentiation. Go ahead, Bridget. Oh, okay. Sorry, I have a thing. I want to say, uh, but I don't want to step on him. Ah, okay, thank you. I was gonna say, like the autonomous, submersible family has so many different acronyms. It really does. It's yeah. like UUV, un unmanned underwater vehicle, <laughs> AUV, autonomous underwater vehicle, um, autonomous surface vehicle. <laughs> yes, ASV. ASV. Yes, there's lots of, um, yeah, there's lots of lots of acronyms for the unmanned autonomous style um, submarine vehicles but yeah these are these are our ROVs remotely operated vehicles and they are tethered our tethered vehicles okay. And then there are some vehicles that can kind of operate as both, right? It can be tethered and untethered. Hybrid. Hybrid. Yeah. Oh, that's right. There Which are, I think they? is what they just used to find the Shackleton uh, endurance. I didn't Shape. get to read much about that. Oh, but yeah. Nui is a hybrid, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nu Nui combines between being autonomous <laughs> and having like this sort of um, blunt, rounded um, for forward section. Mm -hmm. um, and then like opening up, um, having arms that can be used, and and I believe sometimes, so it can optically couple to send data um, through the water column, and it, I believe, has a system where it can be on a very, like a fiber, like not on a winch in the same way as like the, these ROVs are, but like released down, so say it was, say it was like, attached to Atalanta or Argus with like just a fiber, which is like very, 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 very um, thin compared to the um, regular s cable that we use to tether with uh, to the ship. Um, I don't know. Anyway, I don't know that much about it, but it's very interesting technology. It's worth looking into or at least checking into the um, tech demo that they have after this uh, expedition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to tune in on those dives. Zero four, what number? Raj. It's just wild here. It's a lot of uh, a lot of broken pillows, some, some tallis, and then what looks like just interspersed with with nodules. And I'm not sure if those are smaller pieces that just are nucleation points, or if it's uh, like smaller pieces of rock, or if it's just like uh, like miniature versions of some of those nodule fields we saw at other sites. Kind of a wild dive. Yes. Waypoint five is that the last waypoint, correct? Yes. Yes. Great. So now we'll be holding position, and then we'll wait for you to come. Roger that. There is not a lot that's alive over here. Yeah. No, not really, huh? We are still well below three thousand meters. Looks like we're at 3,293, according to Herc. So it's very different than what we've been looking at in past dives, depth-wise. Yeah, this is this is wild in a very different way. 
I really didn't know what to expect on this. And in some ways, I still don't know what to expect. So was this, did this look like it was tallest before and then got crusted over? That's that's what, how I'm reading it. Okay. Yeah, like a, a lot of this wasting and uh, settling after eruption of these lavas probably happened pretty soon, geologically speaking, after those eruptions. Because this stuff just, it hasn't moved right. in tens of <laughs> millions of years just looking at the crust. One piece of life right there, something. Oh, nice spot. A little percentage star. Yeah, yeah. Oh. yep, cucumber and nice. some other little dude. Oh, cool. So I feel like I ought to know this by now, but the manganese crust forms like it's like a chemical reaction with the water. Like it's a chemistry thing that happens. Yeah. So it's um, it's stuff that's dissolved in the water and then it nucleates on uh, like rock surfaces. What's a, what's that what's that verb mean? Nucleates. Um, it's like a. How do how do I describe it? Um. Some kind of a center that serves as a substrate, right? Yeah, it's like an area with some high surface area, and it just has the right, um, I guess, chemical potential in a way. Uh, it's not exactly accurate, but um, there, there's a roughness to the surface that permits um, uh, that that permits precipitation mm -hmm. of um, dissolved materials out. So. Um, Another another kind of nucleation thing to think of is uh, like you know the putting Mentos in a bottle of Coke. Yeah. Yeah. So the reason you get uh, you drop the Mentos in and you get such a vigorous like jetting of foamy uh -huh. Coke. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's because uh, the CO2 dissolved in uh, the Coke. Oh, there's something. Uh, the CO2 dissolved in the Coke uh, can nucleate on the surface of the Mentos, like that candy shell that it has. Yeah. If you look at it under a microscope, it's actually uh, really, really rough. Oh. And uh, there's something about that roughness that permits um, the CO2 to kind of start bubbling out. And it's it's just this very vigorous uh, reaction that um, causes the, uh, the Coke to degas and jet like that. So kind of a similar thing is happening with uh, the manganese, just much slower and much less exciting. What's the, um, what's the, sorry, uh, the thought is there in my head. No, it's okay. Um, what's, okay, you can date mar manganese crust, right? Like, with the age, not on a, not at Red Lobster. I don't know. Can, can you? It doesn't you? have carbon. I, I don't know. That's a question I can ask the USGS folks. Okay, because I was just wondering, like, maybe, like, what's the youngest main, like, because we've, we're seeing so much of it, right? And, like, it's all from maybe different times or whatever. Yeah. Um, so it's like, I guess maybe the thickness or the thinness of the manganese crust, like, would mean indicate, it could, maybe could indicate whether it was, like, less, more or less old? Or no? I don't know. That maybe not. Probably not. Um, in some ways, you um, you can kind of rely on that. Um, it's just we don't necessarily know what the growth rates yeah. look like from place to place. Sponges. So I think that might be one of the questions they're after. Raj. A couple, um, couple nice sponges here again. Yeah. Well, it looks like some stalks. Another one of those large cucumbers. Oh, yeah. A little yeah. more red. Ooh, wait. Is that one of those really big stalks? I think so. Yeah. Which turned out to be a big, long caliphacus. That looked a lot like this, actually. Oxydiscus again, maybe? Yeah. That one. Oh, they look so different. It looks. Yeah. One's kind of stark. Slightly dead? Actually, the. Yeah. Is there one that is interesting to you guys, or Go. particular? Could we zoom on the dying one? Sure. Sure. One is sad, one is happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and do a quick zoom there, please. Let's get there. Wow, it's, like it's a ear. really interesting shape. Yeah. And what do you guys think? It's not really... It doesn't really have that colophagus, no. but I feel like it's just a weirdly shaped one. Oh, Maybe. Maybe it's please. not dying. 
Oh Very good, Art, right, we're gonna get a little one. support here from our team ashore. Even though it doesn't have that obvious like convex inverted umbrella called Vegas, okay? Hey. Our instincts were good. All right, go ahead and push <laughs> on in again, please. Interesting, I've never heard of that. Good. Oh, it's got some friends. Really lovely. Yeah. What a difference between those two sponges. I yeah. know. All right, full wide, please. Um, oh yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, we we know that like the manganese growth rate is is pretty slow. I think one of the questions is how how that rate varies from region to region in the Pacific, mm. like uh, different compositions and stuff. Because you remember that uh, map that Beth showed? Yeah. Yeah, where you have different kinds of uh, uh, like crustal compositions um, around the ocean. So. Yeah, I think that's been one of the questions here. And we've seen a lot of variants, and one of the questions that I've had is um, how much of that is related to like timing of when a rock breaks off and then starts re it starts growing a manganese crust versus, you know, uh, 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 what um, those growth rates look like in that area since like emplacement of those lavas. So um, yeah, a lot of this stuff seems to be a lot less uh, disturbed given how kind of kind of bulbous and just huge these crusts look around here. So um, it seems like things, like those crusts maybe vary a lot less. So I'm wondering if this is gonna give us some interesting information about um, ferromanganese crustal growth here. Yeah. I, I don't know how depth ver uh, factors into that too. Right. So there are just yeah. so many questions. Yeah, you, you, totally. That was a really good question, Kylie. <laughs> so I wish I had a better answer for you. So back row, uh, we are nearing waypoint four. The swing is almost uh, out of the system. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if these are looking very promising for rocks, um, whether or not they're sedimented or not. Um, yeah. But we'll, we'll try. We can try for rock sample once we get a little bit more stable. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's let's keep our eyes peeled, and uh, you know, we might do a little bit more uh, rock poking. Okay. I love that game. I love that game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we still have a, a little bit left to swing. And then okay. We, uh, then we can look. No problemo. I mean, we don't know till we try, right? Yeah. True story. We just need one of them to be loose. That's it. You just know. Just need one. Yeah, the right shape and qualities, but just one. Yep. It's funny, these kind of formations uh, wow. at a higher or less of a depth would be, we're just completely covered with colonies right. and different species. We're seeing more of these bigger blocks of things up here. Yeah. Too. They look like just pillow stacks uh, that are broken apart. And this like big juxtaposing sandy slope on the right side is kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Big globulars. Globulars. <laughs> Yeah, and Jess, I think uh, yeah, as we keep moving in this little area, there might be some places to poke around. Okay. Yeah, this looks Kylie, like it's. you want to get the arm out there? It looks yeah. deceptively yeah. loose. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm probably going to be faked it's out. It's probably going to fake us out. <laughs> yeah, I swear those look loose. Looking for a spot. Looking for a loose rock. Right. Raj. <laughs> All right, I am racked back here. Uh, maybe that one by the slurp, right in front of the slurp. Do you guys see it? Oh, yeah, I see that. Do you want that, that one? Oh, uh, yeah, we can try that. Okay. Um, a couple of candidates uh, a few meters ahead of us, too, if any of these uh, don't yeah. pan out. I sure. am prepared to be shocked if that doesn't come up. Right. I I've overshot that a little bit, Raj. I'm go. not. I'm not expecting <laughs> these rocks to behave. I have grip force three still. I'm gonna fix that just quickly. Roger. Nine, Raj. Coral force versus okay. crusty rock force. Hey, Layla. Do you think yeah. that's a knocked over bathopathies in the background there? Mm, oh, jeez. Mm, 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 yeah, it does look like one. 
Yeah, we could take a I look at that. Read in. I think we've bought ourselves a little bit of time. How about how about I hop up there? I'm gonna hop up a little bit here. Do you want me to? Okay. You can, hold, you can just hold it there. Or something uh, else. There's these look that pretty good a, as well. Oh my gosh, that was a rock. That was a rock. <laughs> Really? <laughs> yeah. But it looked just like one. Did it? it did. Okay. It's some weird light. Give a poke. What's open in the starboard bio, guys? Uh, um, starboard bio D okay. is, a, is the only open. Roger, so I'll look for a small Oh sky. my gosh, it moved. Whoa. Uh, <gasps> before you guys get too excited, too big. That's is it too big? Roger. Probably. Okay. So, but maybe try the one it's on the far side. On the far left. Yeah, like that one? Left. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, that one's probably good. Maybe stuck. Oh, but yeah. Remove. Oh, 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 solid. Good call. Let's take a look at that. that. It looks a little is it too flat? flat. Yeah, it might be a little too flat. Ah, garage. Yeah, it's flat. Bummer. That's okay. What about one of the ones further on the left? Yeah. Garage. <laughs> I like the rock poking game. Open. You're so good at putting it back where it belongs. <laughs> Thanks for doing that. Of course. That's actually kind of fun. Oh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe that one's pretty big. That one's kind of big, but next to it. Put the one right in front of the porch there. Do you see it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you want me to back up, let me know. No, I got it. She's still the porch rock. I forgot Just about the porch rock. Oh, my God. Why is there a porch rock? <laughs> I don't have a porch rock document. Um, I don't think that's, I think that's like that's in there. there. All right, you want to pull your arm back a little and yeah. I'm going to drive ahead. Okay. Thank you. I'm indexed. We're starting to get All right, Lynette, again. you want to come up on the winch a little? Oh, sorry, yep. you're not on a headset. You want to pull up? Yes, please. And you watch your speed in the, um, there, you see it? And then you're watching your delta there. And I can come wide. Yeah, this is a tricky area. Keep going. That's good. Do we have much of a current here? So you see that on the left side of your sonar? No, we that don't. like dark you want to keep that on the outside of that red ring. Yeah. How yeah. about over in this corner here? Um, there's that one that's kind of lobby on the left. It's yeah, it's like almost center screen now. Okay. Do you okay. Mean that one right there. Left of the lasers right yeah. now, like lasers on it. Is that what she was talking about? Yeah, yeah. that might fit. I was Watch. also looking at this one here, but I think it's too big. That's too big. Yeah, that's too big. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. Thanks for okay to do it. That. Yeah. Go ahead. Raj, Raj. Val, look at this. Doesn't it look like this was the original rock and this is all crust surrounding it? Yeah, maybe. It's hard to tell. It could be one of oh, those. Oh, yeah, like, the pillow things, like, too. Like rind and core, and like gooey oh. marshmallow center thing, too. Uh. I, I don't know. It's just so crusted over. Gooey marshmallow center. I'm oh, not sure if those really good cookies I don't think so. Again. Don't think oh, so is that either. one stuck, too? Yeah, I think so. These rocks are deceptive. They are. I was so shocked that second one was yeah. pick upable. It definitely scooched, scooched its way out of the Sk sediment. Scooched. <laughs> what about uh, over in this rock pile here? Yeah, let's poke around over here. Yeah. All right, go ahead and get the arm back out there, Kylie. I'm ready. At this point, I'm ready to go with beggars can't be choosers again. <laughs> what about, uh, yeah, okay, I'm gonna try the one to the right of the screen. Okay, I'm right. thinking this one. Yeah, I think well, that yes. one's gonna be intact. Yeah. Yeah, that one looks pretty intact. Sorry, I didn't yeah. get a chance to almost poke you. Yes. Yeah. What about maybe that one? Uh, this, yeah, this one's look glued. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Wow. I feel like the left too. bits look maybe a bit more. Promising. Like up yeah. past this big hunker. Are oh, you looking over here, yeah. Kylie? Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, there. I think right over here. What about the one right in front of the porch there now? Yeah, that one also looks, looks promising. Looks fractured. Do you see it? Yep. Right um, the that one to the left. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Roger. Okay, I'm coming out. That one right there, yeah. 
I want to rock for my friend. <laughs> <laughs> my friend wants to rock. One of these days where I kind of feel That's a little bit like, look geology. at that crust. All right, I'm going to pop ahead again, guys. Okay, yep. doke. I'm halted. I'm going to tilt down. Is this like popcorn sampling? So that rock on the porch was put there by a previous watch. Yeah. Okay. How about these? Pull up? These look good here. Yeah. Yeah. You're watching in the. Right there's. You have to pull quite a bit back before it even moves. You know. All right. Try that right hand side there, Kylie. Okay. I'm gonna. A couple of those look like candidates. Um. Um, like right below the, s oh, it's right below the slurp. That's bad line of sight. Oh, Raj. Yeah. Like what, like that guy? That one right there. Yep. Sorry. Just had a little. No worries. Oh. 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 Yes. oh. 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 It's awesome. flat. I think Is it? It's look kind of round. Did? Maybe. Okay, hold on. Do you guys want to push on and all that? Uh, nice. Oops. Push it's on in there, flat. please. It's not it's flat. It's not flat. That looks like a pillow fragment. You like yeah. it? Yeah. I okay, love it. Okay, yeah, it's not flat. Okay, I love Raj. it. Great. We okay, got a rock cool for way. our friend. <laughs> <laughs> Starboard D. Starboard Delta. Delta. I'm so Gosh. curious. When to see when you cut it, what how thick that crust is. Right. <laughs> Why is this happening to me? Watch, it's just going to be this tiny little pillow fragment. It's going to be all crust. Uh, do, 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 or as long as you get a few minerals, no. right, that you need? Uh, generally for... Sample salvo now. Or do you need a bunch? D delta. If, delta. I, if I do tungsten on it, uh, 5 to 10 grams nominally. Okay, oh, that's right. coral's still there. It's good. Alright. Okay. What happens if you don't quite have enough? <laughs> then we don't do tungsten. Nice. Straight, yeah. There's no. Oh, sorry. So, Val, why don't we want flat rocks? Oops. Um, I will answer What's that. What's going to be the bearing to our next waypoint? I will answer that. In a uh, going to be. Six zero zero six zero zero six zero Raj. Oops. Sorry, sorry. If we move within zero, uh, point four of a note, I think we can reach. Uh, Does that yeah. look lined up, Jess? No. Raj. Okay, so raise your raise your arm. Yeah, it's better. Okay, so. Well, oh, nice, we Raj. Well <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nicely done. I knocked it so out shadowed. of my fingers. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the flat rocks, um, those are a little likelier to be um, pieces of manganese crust that have broken off at the top of a rock and often have more manganese crusts that have coated them since. So it's like... Uh, a, uh, Sorry, real quick. Did Beth want one? We'll see. Um, I haven't heard back from her. Okay. Is that okay? We're out more. You're good. Um, okay, Raj. I, maybe we make an executive decision and look for one for her. Yeah. Yeah. Might be good to grab one. I think so. One for Beth, or you guys want a water sample? Uh, or both. Might be good to grab another one for Beth. Okay. Um, Kylie, can I steal that real quick? This? Yeah. Raj. So she wants something that's pretty uh, chewed up. Thanks. Chewed up. Yeah. So like soft rock, um, looks pretty weathered orange. From this spot? Um, oh, well that's, that's, that's too far though. Yeah. Yeah, it's too far. If we, if we see something, yeah. Um, you said weathered and chewed up. So yeah, nothing in this gonna zone? it's going to be hard to spot around here, isn't it? What do you think about that one there, Val? Uh, maybe. It's probably cemented, but right below the manipulator, there's one that looks like kind of bulbous. This one? 
you're looking at? No, to the left of the nib right now. Ah. This guy here? Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. No, it's like kind of behind the nib now. Oh, the smaller guy's in the middle. Yeah, in bubble. Okay. Smaller one. The smaller no. here? What you're looking at, just that, yeah. This one? Yeah. I'm just bad zeros no. over here. Oh, it did? Yeah. Okay. Can maybe take a look at it. Sure. So we can get both of them again. Seemed nice and bumpy. Come on. Fine. Just hit. Now oh, it's going between the, the fingers. Yeah. Okay. I can try to get this guy out of here now. Yeah, I can see if I can there we go. find her. What was that? Ooh. It's like pulling teeth. What about yeah. ones closer to the porch? The small one? Oh, yeah, maybe those, yeah. Let me try this one last time. Raj. Okay. Anything else over here, guys? Um, I think we're trying to get a hold of Beth. <coughs> Should we scooch along and look if there's a better spot, maybe? Yeah, all right. Yeah, got it. Anything over here? Mm. Not seeing anything. I mean, one of these little clumpies, any of that? You think uh, right in front of the porch there? Yeah, maybe. Is maybe. that too big? I can't tell how large that is. Or it might be a bit big, actually. What about yeah. on the right, just by the slurp? No, that's attached, probably. Oops, sorry. That's attached. What about below the ballast rock? That field there? There's some smaller bits. Yeah, maybe we poke around and see if there's something loose there. Sure. Are those too small? How big is Beth looking for, again? Um, I think not as big as what we brought up yesterday, but like okay. 10 to 20 centimeters should be good. So there's, maybe these look a bit Yeah, take a look. Weathered. They're definitely coming up. Oh. Oh, they're crumbly. Oh, man. Does That's she want crumbly? Uh, I'm not sure. Ooh, Ooh that does look... Uh, very crumbly. Very weathered. Uh, does that have enough crust, though? Go ahead and push Ooh, on it. That's, that's going to be hard to, uh, hard we to get back in one piece. What time do we need to leave bottom? Is uh, uh, at the end of our shift. Okay, so Beth won't have any time on the seafloor then. Yeah. Um, let me try wet lab real quick. She wants more crust than that, no? I think so, yeah. Okay, so not okay, that one. Forward. That is the kind of coloration that we're looking for, okay. though. Uh, so it looks like we might not make it to waypoint five then by the end of our dive. By the end of our watch, I mean. Yeah, Val, do we want to be prioritizing finishing to waypoint five or grabbing a rock? Ooh. The back here. Two for the price of one. How about this guy? Push it on there, please. Let's yeah, go. what's that look like? A cemented two for? What should be it? That's uh, a ten by twenty or something. Seems like a three fur. Three fur, yeah. maybe. Um, should we take it? I think. I we feel like it's this it. or nothing, so we yeah. might as well take it. Full yeah, rack. these these look really really nice. And You're full rack back, yeah. Patrioidal. Yeah. You want to tilt tray out? Yes, please. Coming out. So that'll go into Omega. Sure. Do you guys want a Niskin here as well? Yes, please. Yes, please. Great, thanks, Kelly. Yeah. Got so it. Uh, with the first one. Oh, sorry. I'll give you a minute. Yep. My wrist is all up in my bad spots. Nice. Okay, coming in. Sure thing. Slowly. <laughs> <laughs> and then a Niskin here? <coughs> yes. Yes. Um, so um, that'll be Niskin. Dose. Two, yeah. She she requested slightly off bottom since um, the sediments are easily stirred up around here, and she wanted uh, 
to ensure that the water column was clear of uh, uh, sediment. So if we're not sure thing. Yeah. I'll get tool trays closed. Roger. Eyes on Niskin bottles. Don't do that. Kylie, you want to press my stick lock there? Actually, you, you, okay. All right, we are one and a half meters off bottom, pulling now. All right, trigger. Beautiful, Roger. thank you. Okay. All right, what's the bearing to that next waypoint that we're gonna want now? Um. So the bearing is zero six zero. Zero six zero. Yep. Roger. Porch light coming off. Uh, shall we move in point uh, zero point four knots? Zero point four, yeah. Let's do it. You ready for it? Yes, uh -huh. please. Bridge, this is nav. Uh, can we move on bearing zero six zero fifty meters speed uh, zero point four knots? Okay, let's switch you over. Affirmative. I mean, we could just. You can, do you want to keep going? Oh. All good. Because you're going to skadoodle, and, you know, we're just going to get it done in 20 minutes. Oh, yeah, up to you. Skadoodle. Skadoodle dive <laughs> indeed. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> Are you going to... If you keep going at that pace, you're going to tug on me. <laughs> yeah. <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> so, Juan, do you mind if we do a DVL reset, please? Sure. Uh, over here? Yes, please. Okay. Zero six zero. What's the distance to waypoint five? He didn't, yeah. He Suleiman, what's the distance to waypoint five? Um, 280 meters. 280, Raj. I think we can make it by the time we finish our shift. Yes. <laughs> we will. <laughs> That's we impressive. There for the maybe three minutes, which is good. Raj. It, uh, good thing there was a lot of biology on this dive. There really wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> this was the rock dive. <laughs> and the take an hour to go get a coral dive. <laughs> Which was great, because we didn't see anything else like that. Yeah. I think it was worth it. Totally. I'm just still just like coming down a little bit though. <laughs> 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 but we got a lot of rocks. We got uh, we got some water samples. We got some crust samples. What was the previously, oh, sorry, excuse me. What was the previous depth that had been seen at, recorded at? Around 3,000. 30, 30, oh, 75. Okay. 3075, so. Raj. Oh, yeah, so it was like a 300 meter difference. Yeah, Raj. That is a lot of distance. And it's a Norella? What's it called again? Maybe Norella, yeah, which is a Primnoid. Norella, which is a Primnoid. So Primnoid is the family? Primnoid, yes. Raj. Norella, Primnoid. Primnoid, Norella. Sorry, I'm Googling it, so I had to say it out loud to remember what I was talking <laughs> about. <laughs> Primnoid Nutella is what came up. That's yep. <laughs> That's it. Norella. Maybe I spelled it wrong. Is it two R's? It's two L's. Oh. N A R E L L A. Oh, I spelled it with a U, so that's probably the Y. I enjoy the Nutella that we have on, on the oh ship my here. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know those things existed. How Those are like They're the one food kilogram. Service. They're, they're, <laughs> they're the food service. They're big, 
food service tubes, 2.2 pounds of <laughs> Nutella, and there's one on every single table. And, and they could be put into containers, but no. no. We leave them in the tube and <laughs> make just, a mess of them. Just, it's like a, a toothpaste tube of Nutella, it's except like it's a kilogram. <laughs> feeling a little desperate there yeah. for a second. <laughs> You're like embarrassed every time. And several have been emptied already. Approximately it's true. We just We just put out a bunch of new tubes. It's like, what, about one-eighth of a stone of Nutella? Yeah, exactly. Two Nutella. <laughs> Steve, look what Steve said. Totally Two Nutella. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I don't know if that would be to our benefit as a society. No, oh my gosh. <laughs> Definitely I don't want not. to see a child try to use a tubatella. Oh God, that would be like that. That, that they would merge into one. Exactly. What is Nutella? Like a hazelnut chocolate kind of thing? Well, it used to have a lot more hazelnut and be like the first ingredient was hazelnut. And then there was a brief oh. window where I took Nutella from what? America to my family in Austria and I AB'd the Nutella. And there, the first ingredient was not sugar yet. And it tasted way more hazelnutty. It was crazy. But now, everywhere, the first that I know, the first ingredient is sugar and then palm oil. And then, and then, yeah, palm and then oil. Uh, hazelnuts. Uh. Hmm. Yeah, it's not what it used to be. It's still it's still <laughs> good, but it's okay. It's not yeah. your fault. In Spain, they have a like rival Nutella brand called Nocia, and my friends swear that it's better than Nutella. Oh, I'm sure that it is. <laughs> you know, we're looking at more angular rocks, and they're just like teasing me now. I know. And they all look really <laughs> loose. <laughs> this has just kind of been a struggle Close dive. Close your eyes, Val. I know. It's just been a struggle dive. <laughs> I think I'll go take some of that energy out on the saw later. Is that there kid in go. the shopping cart again. Uh, we have a question coming in. What are the most frustrating samples you have lost in transit? after recovering the ROV? Oh, uh, for me, we, so I work at methane seeps and we've spent a lot of time trying to get, sometimes it can be really hard to get good core samples because the sediment keeps wanting to fall out as you're taking the sediment core. So we've worked hard to get some good core samples and then put them on the side of the vehicle. And it turns out that in them were tiny chunks that we couldn't see of what is not methane gas in its gas form, but in a frozen form where it's sort of like a, an icy methane. But that's only stable under low temperature and high pressure. And as you come up, it destabilizes into gas. And so that then destabilized and churned up the whole cores on the way up. And uh, yeah, so that, that's, that can be upsetting. Methane hydrate? Yeah. Yeah. All good over here. Thank you. Thanks, so. Too kind. These rocks are mocking us. <laughs> They're also quite big, so not something we'd be able to pick up. There is a sponge. <laughs> <laughs> What's that little Oh, sure thing? enough. It's a shrimp. And a shrimp. <laughs> yep. The shrimp are everywhere, I swear. We saw them all over the place in the Lao Basin, too. We have some Nutella comments coming in, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, of course. The, the craft version of Nutella does not have any palm oil. Oh, that's good. Oh. And someone else is a fan of oval maltine spread, which is chocolate oh spread with malt crunchies. What is? Is that just rock? Never mind. Don't pay attention to what I just did. 
I uh, had never heard of the reason. spread, but in in Austria, Uwe Martina is like a it's like a like a cocoa powder kind of that you put into you can put in lots of stuff, but you can put it in. I want my own milk. Yeah, <laughs> that was a commercial. Yeah. 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 And yeah vitamins. No, I had never seen it here. Weirdly. What? Oh. That's like a classic. That was like the only really? nutritious thing my family gave me as a kid. So what sponge is that? Oval it looks team. a little different than. In yeah, it does look. It did look a little different. It wasn't quite as bulbous. Caliphate is probably. Yeah, caliphate is probably. There's another little coral, black coral, oh, yeah. baby. But like oh, a lot yeah. smoother on the outside. Let's I look what we got. I think you can tell that uh, 12 to 4 watch is starting to get a little uh, hungry. Loopy. <laughs> little loopy too. Lo or low blood sugar. It's, it's been, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's, it's what been is case. snack? <laughs> Been kind of a wild dive. So. I hope it's cookies today. Is that one pink? <gasps> cookies. It might We're have a little bit. We're manifesting the cookies. A little bit of pink to it. The um, that arate. I've no, been trying really not to eat, but it's so addictive. It's really good. The what? That uh, arare that the that we're, that's passing around. Oh. Those little crunchies. Those are good. Yeah. Ooh. Sweet and salty. Sea star next to all those uh, feeding trails. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we still haven't, have we, s oh no, at the very beginning, did they see the, uh, the organism things. that creates those? I we think they called it an, a they, they think it was an aplacophorin. That's right. Whoa, that is a weird sea star. What are you looking at, like the, yeah. the knuckles? Is that Put a fish on in there tighter? It's like a sand Whoa. dollar and person anything as a sea star. It is lighting. gorgeous. Those are also echinoderms. They're also in the same phylum. Sand dollars. Very cool. All right, full light, please. Oh, yeah, so I have a question for anybody who thinks they know the answer. Um, Shelby and I were getting some questions. Like the, some of the students really love talking about the sea stars. And I know that in shallower depths, they can sort of sense uh, shadow or changes in light, right? right? That's part of their sensory. Yeah. Um, is there any chance to collect that? Steve is saying, mm. uh, are we too late? The ship, please? Yeah, they do uh, so it's either collecting that or getting to waypoint five. Which would be preferred? Uh, uh, you're making me everyone's make asking again. for collections. Uh, Apparently, Chris Miles says it's really rare to see these these stars below two thousand meters. Cool. Uh, okay, you want to back the ship? It's up to you. Bruce, suck it up. Oh, no. Hold oh, position, no. please. <laughs> I can only do one of these decisions a day. <laughs> um, okay, let's do it. Um, I think we have enough time. We've got 12 minutes. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. That does fall into the per in the permit. Um, so how do you guys envision collecting this? You guys want? Can we store it in the? What, what is it here? Yeah. We can. We can. Um, like whatever method you want to use, whether that be like a Bridge suction the to the side, or a grab to the side, starboard. Can we go reciprocal? Uh, two for uh, two for zero. 50 meters, please. Yes. All right, so we're going to back the ship up. We have about 50 meters of layback, which means that we are going to be waiting about five minutes for us to get back to that position. Um, and then we'll have five minutes there, and then uh, the next watch will come up. Okie dokie. <laughs> yeah. So there's a question, uh, are there any albatrosses on the deck at the moment? Uh, I'm looking at the back deck on our monitor. It looks bird-free at the moment. We've been blessed by only having a few kind of hanging out behind the ship. But they, have, they haven't been landing on the ship, have they? Uh, there were like two that landed on the ship one of the first days, and that was it. Good, Most yeah. of them are... Uh, I, hanging out in the water. I may get a habit of putting on some gloves and um, uh, uh, escorting them off the boat, um, just so that the, like the longer they stay on the ship, the more disoriented birds can get. So just mm. get, make this not a hospitable place for them. You know, it's like the best thing for them. I thought they had seen these like the whole dive. I didn't even realize this was like a collectible. I'm trying to recall if that's the same thing that we uh, zoomed on earlier, but I thought it was. Um, I don't remember ago. seeing it, Th but it looked like yeah. the that doesn't mean we did. 
Well, either way, we'd be, uh, we'd be zooming. okay under the permit. If this is new, we're allowed to collect one and, uh, until we see at least 10. So that this would be okay. If it's one of the ones we've been seeing a lot of, then we would be okay as well. Okay. But it sounds like Steve thinks this is a really big deal to collection. see it at this depth. Okay. First time he's seen us see it. Yeah, I guess we haven't been zooming. There have been a lot of white sea stars. We yeah, haven't been zooming on we all haven't of them. been looking at them closely. No, we haven't been. Um, <laughs> and I'm not a biologist, so I'm placing a lot of trust in the biologists. Oh, yeah. Chris so. Wow. Well, not in the Okeanos Sounds guide like as far as he knows. Wow. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna start backing down there. Um, I, see I don't that. think we've felt the swing yet. I think you're still swinging forward, but let me know if your sonar gets scary. Sure. <laughs> Fear is the measure we're going by. <laughs> <laughs> scary. My sonar is scary. <laughs> <laughs> You mind if I follow you that way? Uh, Look that way? Do you actually mind maintaining that heading? Is that okay? Yeah. Thank you. Is it over here? Yeah, I think that one's it. Uh, you're still swinging forward. Okay. I want to maintain here for a minute. Eventually. Um, I have pulled up on my screen the coordinates if that's needed, but... Great. Yeah, yes. we have a waypoint marked, but sure. um, if we can't find it, then that would be very helpful. I think it's going to be us leaving this for the next watch, honestly. Can you tell me the coordinates, please? Sure. Uh, lat? Uh, off SPL? Off SPL? Does it, it's, we're streaming high pack live. I know, but should we? <laughs> um, Sure, I can. I'll, I can type it in, or just directly to Suleiman off SPL. Do do do. Yeah, I can do that too. <laughs> Great. See again. Um, I wasn't listening. Yeah. Okay. Uh, looks like Beth is coming in. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, three, two, five, three, depth. Are you sure? Three, two, five, three, point oh eight. That's give us two, eight point five, three, nine, seven, six. And one seven one point zero seven four two zero seven five, right? Is that it? Suleiman, you're on SPO. Sorry. Okay, Kylie, I think we can go down a little bit on the delta. I'm at 16. Do you want less? Yeah, you want to give me a little less? Yeah. I think you've stopped with your forward swing. Great. There. Is this it? Oh, yeah. It's A star. <laughs> Good point. That's it. That's it. Roger. Um, it's, it's the same rocks. Roger. Wait. Yep, that's it. Great. We're going to wait for Argus to Atalanta to come into position a bit more. Oh, that um, was much easier this time. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. Because it's, it's got the mollusk trail right next to it, too. All right. We're going to hand over, but we're going to get them in position, and they'll take the sample. 
Um, Thanks, guys. Great job, team. I gotta hand it over. Yeah, this was an excellent watch. Thanks, guys. Hello. Howdy. Yeah. Howdy. I don't know who that is. Who is that? Aloha. Just double wide. Okie dokie. R to chokey. Turn this uh, down. I heard that. Everybody on four to eight. Welcome. Hi, Shelby. Hello. Hey, Shelby. Hey, Shelby. <laughs> Aloha, everybody. Hello. Okay. Just get settled in. Hey, front row. Hello. Did you get any? Uh, I didn't think to ask what is the rock on the front porch. Do we know? Nope, don't know. I'm gonna ask you. <laughs> okay. I'm guessing ballast. Mystery rock. Okay. Uh, so for the sea star, are we going to use the slurp as a suction cup and then put it in the forward box? I don't know that it's going in the forward box because that already has bio samples in it, so it's going to go yeah, in starboard. I've got some info on that. Um, hoping to use suction and then putting it in the starboard bio box. Nope. Uh, alpha or echo? That will not no? work. So we can do grab it with the manip, okay. or we can use suction. Sorry, start again. We can grab it with the manip and put it in the starboard bio box, or we can suction it into the forward box, but not suction to starboard. Okay, we're going starboard with the manip then. Okay, well, that. hold on. Can you... Open the forward bio box so I can see what's yeah, in it. You betcha. Could you 
eastbound porch light, please. Yeah, so I think there's actually enough space in here that we could put it in the Omega in the back okay. and the rock won't be, they should not interfere with each other. Roger that. And I think, I think that's, that's going to be a much better, it. much better sampling technique. Yeah, awesome. Agreed. Thanks for that, Beth. All right. I know there's some excitement about this star, so we want it to come back as pristine as possible. Okay. Um, do we know, did we already get nice zooms on this? I don't stuff know. Stuff like that? Um, yeah, sorry, Diane. Uh, unclear. I wouldn't mind to just make sure that we do that. Yeah, let's Roger. set up to take a couple good photos before we Go ahead, start trying to sample. All the way. Do you want, what do you want on bubble cam? This uh, view or craft arm? Uh, oh, this is beautiful. That's beautiful. That's good there. Okay. That's great. All right. We got some stills yep. happening. Is it possible to bring the light down just a tad so we can maybe see a little bit more contrast? Can we yeah. try turning porch light off? Play around with that. Maybe oh, that, there's your that's kind of nice. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Thank mm -hmm. you. I like you, the contrast. Yeah. Really we nice. We can even take down lights off, maybe. Down lights. Let's see. That would be bad. <laughs> Ooh, that's, that's bad. That's a lot of contrast. <laughs> a little yeah. bit more light than that. Oh. This looks like um, chicken skin. It does. Ooh. <laughs> 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 hey, are you ready for sampling? Go I am ready. Cool I am though. ready also. This okay, is sample 145. All right. Uh, I think... Uh, porch light on, please. Uh, yes. I don't know. I don't think I need a bu bu bubble right there would be best, probably. Okay. Do we know what type of sea star this is, or is it a so poorly understood, or what's yeah, the... Yeah, great question. What's the motivation for yeah. getting this guy? So Can it's I get a, partial a zoom, please? Gonia steridae. Uh, maybe. Um, uh, one of the things that's very excited uh, exciting about this mm -hmm. is that this would be a record-breaking water depth wide, description <gasps> for this oh. species. Oh. Uh, it seems that the deepest collected previously was more like 2,000 meters, and we're currently oh, yeah, at 3,000. Yeah. Okay, zoom in. 250-ish. That is sample worthy for sure. Um, just in case this fits in the slurp. Yeah, what slurp canister is open? Uh, Can we do seven? We could do seven. Let's do seven. They are right. all available. Just in case. Wonderful. Okay, I got seven lined up just in case. It might fit, so. All right. Which is good or bad. Uh, okay, can you please yeah, start with Yeah, small. What, 40 like five centimeters? Percent? Six centimeters? All right, we are at 40. Okay, good. Come wide, please. Okay, can you please box out? Yes, forward box out. Wow, perfect size. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, if we could get a partial Stand zoom on, on the, the uh, okay. this side. Roger. Okay, zoom in, please. Thank you. Okay, come wide. Great. And once I get the hose out of the way, you can box out a bit more. Okay. Actually, you can leave the box there and get ready to <laughs> kill suction. Okay. And you can do that now. Killed. 
We're at zero percent. Roger. Might take us some. Maybe a little tap time. tap. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. Close nice. the box, please. All right. All right. Great Good work. Nice. That was just the right size. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Beth, what was your estimate on that size? Uh, about six centimeters from okay. star to star tip. Yep. Uh, Lynette, can you give me your understanding of where we are and what we can do? Yes. Um, it looks like it's going to take about three and a half hours to okay. come up. So I don't think we have a lot of time to explore. <coughs> but we can take a look at where we are. Uh, waypoint 5 is about... A uh, bit over 200 meters away. Right, and we partially made it there and then came back. Yep. Okay. Uh, yep. Uh, just so we don't recross our steps, what if we took a bearing that's more north or northeast? Um, sure. Maybe something like that. Yeah, a little more gradual. Okay. Just to see something different. All right. Since we're, there, we're not going to make it to waypoint five. Okay. Sounds good. You ready for a move? I'm ready for a move. Okay. I feel like at this depth we could have put a move in hours ago. Yeah. Bridge, nav. Can we move five zero meters bearing zero three five, please? Thank you. Uh, 0 0.2, please. Let's go 0 0.4. Yeah. yeah. Bridge, can we change that to 0 0.4 knots? Warp speed. Thank you. Yeah, that's what they've been doing so far. So, get a lot of layback, and that is fine. Okay. What was it, 0 0.35, you said? Yes. Thank you. For the viewer wondering what type of sea star that was, um, I believe our scientists ashore were saying that it uh, comes from a family of sea stars in Goniasterid, Goniasteridae. Yes. Um, so, very cool patterns on that one. Yeah. So a common name for these are cookie stars. <gasps> of course. So Good cute. Old chicken cookie. <laughs> <laughs> like oh, that's weird, make. chicken cookie. Mm. Dogs like chicken cookies. They do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> they <chicken> do. <laughs> Do we know what type of bottom we're looking at here? What type of sort of rock structures? Uh, these all look like small pillows mm, okay. that have been cemented together um, with some carbonate sediment around them. I'm trying to remember the name of the organism that makes these little black trails on the rocks. I'm um, not remembering it. Mm. I'm not sure if it's a chitin or something else. Any sense of uh, current down here, Trevor? Not much. There's a little bit going right to left-ish. Okay. I could get a better bearing if you want, but not in lots. No, okay. I think that's what Val was saying, too. That on the last shift, there's not a lot of current. Oh, wow. I didn't know what you were talking about with those black tracks, but now that I see them, they're yeah. everywhere. Mm -hmm. There was one underneath the star as well. Yeah. Really? Huh. There's 
there's a stalk of a dead sponge just below that bigger boulder mm -hmm. coming into the center of the frame. Not mm -hmm. a lot of life here, is there? No, mm -hmm. this is pretty deep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Could you zoom in on the stalk, please? So it looks like it might have been a... Oh, it's kind of hard to tell. It's just the stalk. I think earlier they saw some Caliphacus. Is that another cookie star right there? Where do you, oh, yeah, there's another oh. star right behind the stock. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wait. Can you circle it? Don't see it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. On the right, right side. There. Nice eyes. Who oh. 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 Dang, Steven. Yeah, that's a nice catch. Let's see if I can get some imagery of it. <laughs> Want to come wide? Uh, we'll stay there. I'll go until I bonk. You can zoom in more, I think. Oh, there's the bonk. Yeah, same guy. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it looks like a s the same species. All right. Whatever we Thank collected. And yeah, we got the little tiny coral on the rock boulder, too. The other one was deeper, though. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a record breaker. Yeah. Our science enthusiasts are wondering if maybe it was a limpet of some sort making those tracks. Don't know if they... So according to our deep, scientists <laughs> ashore... There's several things that could make those tracks. So oh, okay. sea stars are one of them. Oh, oh nice. So that would huh. Zoom in, please. track with where we collected the sea star. Oh yeah, there's a nice little black coral. Black coral there. And there's something under the rock right there. A mushroom coral or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh yeah, there is something. Yeah, right there. A little guy. Hmm. I'll have to go back through my notes and see what we're thinking. I know that we've seen another Bridge one of these now. on the dive. I just okay, don't remember which one it is. Can we have another move five zero meters bearing zero five zero, please? Thank you. So that pink, uh, pinkish black coral. This may be a bathopathies. Another star to the right. Oh, now they're everywhere. What? <laughs> right here. So maybe they're the ones making these trails. Yeah, yeah. apparently. It makes more sense huh. now, Use for sure. Star, and there's another one just over here. Oh, wow. Oh, so no, that's just stars. sediment. Sorry, just kidding. Okay, come wide, please. I thought I saw something else over here. That one looks a little different. Another type of star to the right. Brittle star. Yep. Oh yeah, there's oh, a brittle nice. star here. Mm -hmm. There's a brittle star there. I Zoom think. in on this one, please. What yeah. are the tracks? Like what? It's wow. They're okay. just Thanks. potentially nomming on oh, the material. Got oh. it. And they'll turn around. Here. I don't think it's something they're depositing. Yeah. I think it's a what they have removed. I think. Just cleaning up. See janitors. <laughs> 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 There's a small coral there. Mm -hmm. A couple of pieces of life down here. Are we going to be doing any more rocks or niskins or anything? No. Roger that. We are full up on rocks. There's another sea star in the back there. Yeah, totally. oh, I see they it. Yeah, everywhere. It's like a red carpet out here. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Does that make five or six that we've seen? There's another one right there. Maybe five now. <laughs> How about five or ten? <laughs> this is a dead sponge here. Zoom in, please. Hmm. Is that a rock? I think that's a rock. I think it's, yeah. Oh. It looks like a nest. It looks like a bird's nest or something. Yeah. Wow. Tiny huh. little coral or... Yeah, there's something, something right there, yeah. Hanging off the side of that rock.
Okay, thanks. Okay, we have about 20 meters left of this ship move, then it's probably time to think about coming up. I think we can keep moving it and then we can just do recovery as we swing. That's okay. fine. Okay. Might as well go for gold. There's another sea star. <laughs> nice. Probably like six, Diane, maybe? I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I think we might be close to seven, eight. There's another There's one. There's a seventh right there, or eighth. So would they be eating smaller things on the rocks? Because it's not like at higher depths, sea stars that are seen, you know, hanging on the corals and eating the polyps, but there's so many of them, so something mm -hmm. sustaining them down here. Yeah, I don't know. That's interesting. Can we get a partial on this feature over here? Yeah. I want to see if it's a Xenophyophore. Right? Maybe they're just picking uh, small things off of the rocks, like Ye marine snow that's fallen under the Right, mm -hmm. maybe. Because mm. they're not that big. They're kind of like small, a little bit, a little thin, where the ones at higher depths were a little, little chunky. Brittle star in the background. Okay, zoom Ooh, in, please. Nice. Two brittle stars. No, it's yeah. that oh, weird it's brown rock again. It's small, oh. though. Oh, yeah. I collected one of those on an earlier in the dive, I believe. Um, this little brown rock. Yep, we got a Brazinga sea star off to the left of the frame. You can come wide. And a brittle star on the right. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Bridge nav. Animals everywhere. Can we move five zero meters bearing zero six five, please? Thank you. Can you please zoom in the sponge? Oh, wow. Oh, look at that. Oh. It's the first one we've seen on this watch. Mm -hmm. Alive. Nice looking one. Alive. Yeah. Alive. <laughs> so Sorry. So you <laughs> plug to I mean, maybe it's the truth. an Amphidiscala, but I'm not sure. Looks like pottery. Looks like maybe that one. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Oh, squat lobster? behind it. Yeah, a little squat lobster hiding in the, the rock crack. Right. Could we get some stills of that? Well, there was something in the sand, too. Sea pen, maybe? Oh. Oh, wow. What is that white thing? A little uh, clear octocoral, maybe? Mushroom coral? I don't <sighs> see it. Not very so, uh, center frame. Zoom in, please. Oh. A little more. Oh, geez. Oh, wow. That was so the yeah, blending. Nice eyes, Trevor. Wow. Uh, interesting. Huh. Little, little tiny ones. Little associate on it as well. Wow. Oh my yeah. goodness. The more you zoom, the more animals you see. Isn't that true? It's crazy. Great. Thanks. Uh, one of our viewers, that um, sort of bird nest looking rock thing, are saying that it uh, probably was a dead sponge that has been encrusted because it was dead so long. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Hmm. A dead vase sponge, maybe, with a manganese layer. Hmm. An Interesting. No. AKA a fossil. AKA a <laughs> fossil. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, viewers. So we'll try to be off bottom at the bottom of the There's hour. There's another sea star. But in the meantime, we'll keep on trucking. There's something else in the middle. Mm. Oh yeah, looks like another Brisinga sea star attached to the bottom of that boulder. Another one of those little brown rocks. Mm -hmm. What do we got? A hundred meters for the ship to the top of the summit. Yeah, I think something close to that. Summit or bust. <laughs> Look at all that sediment. <laughs> one, two, one meters. How far from us? Oh, even farther. <laughs> one seventy-five. I don't think we'll get that in twenty minutes. Ten minutes. <laughs> We'll go even pulling. faster. Two knots. <laughs> <laughs> start pulling Atalanta with the uh, with her. Yeah, how are you doing on keeping up there, Ashton? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing fine. I Just have help swimming. from the ship. Yeah. <laughs> true. Very true. Ashton, today you got to go below three thousand meters. Oh. <gasps> 
<gasps> oh, here we got I a did. little. I did. That's oh, cool. Look at that. Something is that an anemone? An anemone. An anemone. Oh, and a sea pen just below it. Yeah. Oh. Nice. Oh, cool black it looks like looks there's like a yeah. little tiny one there it's too. Oh, good eye. Can we get a close up on the sea pen if possible? Sure. Yeah. Snap zoom. I know we're moving. Oh, we're not moving that fast. Not yet. Okay, zoom in on that sea pen, please. Let's make sure to get some stills of that. Bridge nav. Thank you. Thanks. Can we move five zero meters zero seven five, please? Thank you. Hey, back row, can you please find out if we are clear to dump this rock on the porch when we can, comes yeah, time for ascent? Yeah, we'll do. Thank you. Uh, Diane is going to contact folks in the data lab or the lounge. For the viewers wondering if we're going to collect any more rocks, uh, we are not. I don't think we have any more space. We're going to collect a rock. <laughs> I think we're, we're all rocked out. No more. The funny concept. Only room for negative one more rock. <laughs> <laughs> There's another sea pen, I believe. Yeah. Mm. Another one behind it, too. Yeah. There's another one up here. Another baby little wee one right there. It's a lot of sediment on this sort of slope. Yeah. I was going to ask, do you have any idea how deep this sediment is? or? Like they tried poking it earlier, oh, really? and you couldn't even get the manip into it. Really? Like it's packed. No, it's thin. Oh, it's thin. So the rock is like oh, right, right under right it, right it. underneath. Yeah, that makes sense. Interesting. Okay. Got it. Looks like there's a sea star maybe attached to one of those sea pens. You can actually tell by just kind of driving into it too and see how far in the bumper goes. It's deeper than I expected, but. No. Oh. But not that deep? Not that deep, no. Mm. Thanks, Trevor. Yeah. yeah, look at the little trails through the sediment. Oh, yeah, if you look really close. Is it possible to get a partial on the sea pen we're going by on the yeah, right? Yeah, now that I've made a big mess, sorry. It's okay. Uh, go ahead, Steve. Oh, there's a brittle star. Oh, yeah, <laughs> hanging out. That is a desperate little brittle star. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hang on. All right, I should get out of here. Oh. Okay. Thanks. It's the only little little coral it could find. I know. It's like, I guess this will have to do. <laughs> I bet the ship will make it to the waypoint. Yeah, almost there. So we think these sea pens that we're passing, that rock is ballast. Roger, thank you. Uh, the sea pens that we're passing are from the, I'm going to say this wrong, Funiculinidae, uh, species not quite certain, but. We haven't seen many sea pens yet on this expedition because we haven't seen much sediment. Can we get a partial yep. on this? I believe it's a black coral. Yep, I was thinking the same thing. Okay, go ahead. Yep, looks like it. I'd yeah. say. Maybe a little bit different than the one we saw earlier, which was more pink. They okay, you come like, on. They both had like what seemed like extra long stalks before they branched to me. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Trevor, what Hello. do you think is the possibility of slurping a sea pen? <laughs> considering <laughs> considering oh. our ships move. Uh, fine. Yeah? Totally. Let's do it. Okay, it's a challenge, next time yeah. you see one. Yeah. Come full <laughs> double extra wide, please, and bubble on craft. Double wide. Bubble on craft, please. Bubble on craft, gotcha. Do you want porch light? No, that's fine. Should we move to slurp six? Yeah, any slurp but seven. Yeah. Any slurp but seven, please. We didn't get anything in seven. Let me well, see. No, that's yeah. true. We yeah. didn't. Come on, you. Okay. Little rascal. Let me get that camera on the right slurps. Yeah, and you can rotate the slurps to the appropriate one. Okay. So C pen is where they were. They were. They're underneath us, what I think. But we might. Ahead? Yeah, we we might see one. Ever forward. We said seven is good. Let's seven is six. still good. Well, you want to do six? I want to do six. Okay. Six. I think that What's is that purple six? thing. Sea pig. Oh or yeah. Cucumber? Yeah, it looks like a oh, sea yeah, cucumber. Oh yeah, sea cucumber. You see cucumber? Cool. Chilling out. I it's love the same those. color as that headless chicken one. <laughs> oh, it could be. Uh, <laughs> it could be one just laying down, not swimming. Let's do a quick snap zoom. Maybe not, but no, it doesn't quite look like it. Ooh. Such a pretty color. Such a dark, rich color. I know, Five super rich. Right. Thanks, come wide. Come wide. Like plum. It's yeah. nice because it makes it not translucent. <laughs> All right. You don't, don't want to see, 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 you you see the inside? It it <laughs> yeah. Can't get too far off the bottom to look for a sea pen because then you won't see them. Yeah. It's getting steeper and more rubbly. Um, hmm. Maybe it's the left. I think yeah, there's another sea pen. I mean, sea cucumber. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, right we're there not to the left. That. Sorry. We're looking for sea pens. Okay. All eyes for sea pens. There it is. There's one. I think there's, oh, one, there's right one right up there. here. Yep. Going, going, going. Steep. Yeah, you bet it is. Uh, let's be ready to take some pictures. Mm hmm. Maybe speed mode here. Oh, and it has a. Star attached. It has a star attached. Yep. Don't bury the manipra. So these can retract into the soil, right? Into the sediment? I think so. I've heard of that. I don't know if it's Can you zoom in, please? Or am I thinking of a worm, maybe? Tube worm. A little more if you got it. Okay, come wide, please. Good with the stills? And you can slurp on, uh, probably going to need a bit. Let's say start at 60. Okay, going up to 60. And you can zoom in halfway there, Steve. Good there. All right, we're on 60. If, um, to our scientists ashore, if you could let us know why you, we think the sea pen is interesting, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Oh, I've cleaned them off, but I haven't. Yeah. I gotta actually there we get go. in there. Yeah. There we go. Let's look in the canister. You see it go? Not yet. Not yet. Come full wide, please. Whoa. Full wide. And you can slow it down to 30. Okay, slowing to 30. I can't see. Yep, it's oh, in oh, there. Oh, it's in there. Great. You can slow it down to zero. All right, slowing and to zero. And we'll start zero. getting set up for recovery. Okay. Um, you can rotate the jars to flush. Let's do that. And we don't need to flush right now. We'll do that when we... Come on. Stop. All right, I'll do that later. Um, rock off the porch. Okay. So I'm trying to get these jars to rotate. I think I need to okay. go the other way. Oh, oh I thought Okay, oh. that's not. Okay. Oh, well, that, that works not, too. Not elegant, but <laughs> thank you for your service, Rock. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for being our ballast. Thanks for holding us down. Not bad, team. 
two, you know, two nice. animal samples in less than 30 minutes <laughs> <Half an hour. laughs> yeah. while transiting at 0.4 knots. <laughs> there we go. All and right, another sea now, cucumber please. coming yep. by. Four right off there to the left. Just turning oh, another one. Another one. one. Yeah. Oh my gosh. More of those wow. tracks. And come up on Delta Two, please. Coming up. You can set your heading to uh, 135. Okay. Fish in the We just saw a fish, yeah. And you can turn off flush, please. It is off now. Thank you. Well, that was a valiant attempt. We almost made it to waypoint five. <laughs> that's great. If it's this steep, maybe we'll make it. Yeah, yeah that's true. This, this is my off-bottom maneuver. You can turn off porch light, please. Okay. It is off, actually. Okay. Mm -hmm. And do you want me to keep coming up or try to yeah, bring Delta to zero? You can keep it between this and zero. That's fine. Okay. Sounds great. Diane, do you see this message in here about handling this C pen. Might want to put a note of that in the sample page. My heading Thanks is set that. to I'll one three it. five, but I'm getting yeah. pulled a little bit or you can kill auto heading now. Okay. I just wanted to make sure you came around the right way. Okay. Of course, we're but we're good now. Gotcha. For the Another viewer wondering, um, you can change my setting we didn't need that rock. Thing. <laughs> it was used for you? ballast. That's why we didn't sample it. All right. Okay, and Stephen, can we get Future Winch on the screen over here, Roger please? that. Do you want to mess with um, the tilt? I do. I'll get that looking good. Get lights on. Get tilt down. Okay, a little suction Thanks nozzle. Thanks so much. Let's just be nice, please. Okay, that's pointed down with full lights. Roger, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> What? <laughs> Why? There we go. So this was our deepest dive so far of the expedition. Which also means we're going to have a prolonged blue water time here as mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. recover from 3,200 meters. Hey, back row. Hey. Could yeah. I please have someone go outside and tell Dan that we are coming up? Yeah. I can do that. Thank you. Thanks, Annabelle. So today's dive was going to be be 16 hours and I guess does it include recovery so turning into 12 mm -hmm. okay hey Diane I have a question for you I'm wondering if you could tell us what we're seeing on channel 3 right now <laughs> But you're not on SPL. When you get a chance, if you're still working over there, it's fine. What is yeah, that? so we've got a little zoom in on the back deck right now. Uh, we've got three containers back there. They're shrouded. Um, <laughs> those are three different sponges that we've collected on our last dives, and they are drying. So we've taken a little snip of that sponge and saved it in ethanol for a DNA analysis, and then we dry the remainder of the sponge um, to try and give our, um, our scientists uh, uh, an idea of what it looked like in situ. We also have, of course, all of the video footage that we've taken mm -hmm. and all of the still photos. So between the, the three things, uh, hopefully we can get you know more information about these samples that we've collected. So if they're, they're shrouded to protect them, but they're sitting in the sun so that they dry a little bit more quickly than sitting in the lab. This includes beard sponge? 
Uh, Beard Sponge is not in that trio oh, right there, okay. but um, yeah. Cool, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, a, it's essentially a drying oven, Hawaii style. How's that? <laughs> It'd be so great if something giant just like swam past the screen. <laughs> That'd be awesome. For three hours. For three. <laughs> just back and forth, <laughs> following her, and back and forth, back and forth. There's a, uh, there's. Some viewers are wondering, how are the sponges smelling right now as they're drying? Pretty terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's another reason why they're outside. Uh -huh. Yeah. Not great. <laughs> Speaking of big things swimming by, there's, a, there's more video of the whale shark that we saw yesterday up on the Nautilus Instagram. Ooh. Yeah, uh, Stephen got some awesome I GoPro not videos. I see and that. Dan. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, kudos to you guys for making that happen really quickly. Yeah, it was all Dan who put together this uh, makeshift extended pole so we could get I the was GoPro very impressed. deep enough into the water <laughs> from the back of the ship. And it happened so fast. I was like, when yeah. did he even put this together? Like two like long, what looked like like PVC pipe duct tape together and like. <laughs> I, <laughs> it was, I was very like Lara Croft, but like man. <laughs> <laughs> I was having so much fun yelling at Stephen what side of the boat to go on. Yeah, Annabelle was a great spotter. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciated She's it. She's like, just in case you didn't see, it's over here. It's like, Stephen. <laughs> down low there on the back deck, you can't see into the water too <laughs> far. And then up two stories, it's a little easier. I wonder why she stayed around so long. And yes, it's a girl in my mind. Um, for like an hour, if not maybe a little more. Yeah, I, I think a like little more than an hour. She was just circling. Going under the ship, coming around. Very interesting. Even after, well, yeah, I was curious. Mm -hmm. Hey, front row. Hello. Viewer is wondering, uh, do you always ascend and descend with the lights on the ROVs? Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Otherwise, it's too scary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Nobody likes that. <laughs> but then, uh, yeah, if we didn't, we couldn't see anything. Right. Past, but I mean, that's, yeah. that's why we get to see more floaty, swimmy things. Yep, this is true. This is true. Oh, it seems like the whale shark footage is also on EV Nautilus Twitter. If people prefer Twitter, you want to see it? There you go. <laughs> I wonder if they showed... Uh me and Mark running back and forth across the deck on. I hope so. Free. We need the behind the I scenes. I heard they were laughing at us up here. <laughs> <laughs> running back and forth with the giant pole. Once again, the video of the whale shark um, can be found on Nautilus Live Instagram or Twitter. Um, the last time I checked, it was on the Nautilus Live story. Um, it's been posted now. It's posted too? Yeah. Fantastic. So it is both posted and on the story and on Twitter, apparently. Uh, I don't really know how to use Twitter, so I don't know. I haven't seen that one, but 
It should be on there too. Oh, what were the um, the striped fish that were hanging around the whale shark? I forgot. Pilot fish. What do you call? Some of them were pilot fish. Pilot fish. There you go. I think the striped ones are pilot fish. They they have like really thick black stripes on their bodies. There was also a fish that was white that was uh, seemed to be clinging to the whale shark at times. Mm. So clingy. <laughs> Some type of suction that Jess could explain to us. Mm. Yeah. Was that the Nora? <laughs> oh, maybe. I feel like I remember her. Uh, maybe that was this striped one. Annabelle, you want to give us some whale shark facts? Oh gosh, I'm not ready. <laughs> <laughs> Are you looking um, at remoras right now? <laughs> yes. Yeah, me too. I think they were, remoras we, were that longer, they were the longer white ones, right? Yeah, it had yeah. remoras as well. Mm -hmm. So they were pilot fish and remoras. Are the biggest living fish species mm. that we know of. That's my fact. I think the biggest one was like 60 feet. I know, I was just reading that. Wow. <laughs> you stole my back. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> Steve, did those GoPro, that GoPro have uh, scaling lasers? Do we get to know how big it was? Negative, no scaling lasers on the GoPro. Rats. But um, Rats. if you mention that to Dan, you know, I'm sure tomorrow there will be. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we would have maybe seen like a humpback or something before we saw a whale yeah. shark. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. expecting that. Yeah. I think they got listed as endangered a couple of years ago. Whale sharks. I read I don't this know. somewhere I think when on I did IUCN, a brief yeah. Google, but it's worth fact checking that. Usually we see whale spouts on a cruise, I think, most of the time I've been mm -hmm. out, but this one we haven't seen any yeah, that's mammals yet. I'm surprised we haven't I seen like dolphins on the bow or anything. Right? Or maybe they've already done some migrating. Maybe. Yeah. When we were out in the fall, early winter, mm -hmm. I was told that was kind of a good time to see whales. We saw a few. Man, I love the suggested questions though when you Google a. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm spying on Annabelle's screen and only have the suggestion. Oh, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm so slow. I'm embarrassed now. <laughs> no, but see all of this. you know how you ask one question and Google prompts you with all the other questions you might wonder about? Yeah. Oh, that's it's like, exactly can a shark and a dolphin have babies? I don't know. <laughs> Click it. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Click it. <laughs> it looks like they were maybe recently put on. Oh, no. I don't think they were, actually. We'll see. Those fish that we were talking about, the remoras, though, it, it does look like they maybe attach onto whale sharks. That makes sense. I have a question for everybody. Yeah. So, you know, well, at least in my family, I'm like the adventurous one because I will like go out into the ocean and stuff and everybody thinks I'm crazy for doing that. Um, what is one adventurous like activity that is just too much for you? Like for me, that whatever that sport is where you jump off the cliff and you have like that squirrel that flying squirrel suit jumping. on and they just no. dive right off the cliff, but they start to glide and Isn't they can uh, open up their jumping? base suit. jumping. Base jumping. Base jumping with a wingsuit. That is just, yeah, that's, no. that's too much, and I will never, and that's 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 the end of my adventurous rope. I don't also, think I could ever do that. Also, tightrope walking over canyons is a <laughs> hard no. Hard no. This is our list of hard no's. Yeah. Hard no's, this is our hard, hard no adventurous no. list. What if you had a harness, though? You were like tethered. Oh, oh, no. oh, so I've seen people do that slacklining to get the I harness. And would yeah. still only yeah. make it like two feet before I fell off. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it over a pool. It's a lot of fun over a pool. Well, that sounds Ooh, fun. Oh, well, that's different. Yeah, that's yeah. fun. That's a good idea. I think 
a lot of things seem fun to me, like the squirrel suit seems super fun, but oh, no. also I'm just not that, I'm a, I'm a little too risk averse. <laughs> I'm not the most risk averse person, but that is just that's, too That's far. up there. Yeah, that's yeah. up there, absolutely. I think a lot yeah. of the people that do that don't live very long, <laughs> and they all know that. <laughs> For me, it'd be deep cave diving. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Uh, do you do shallow cave diving? No, but I would. Okay. Or not, even, no. what about like uh, not diving, but just like caving? Like spelunking? Oh, I've done that. I've done squeezing that. through. I love that stuff. Uh. You got to hold your breath to get through the spots because uh. it's yeah. too scary tight. too. Oh. Oh. It's a puddle. You got to tip your head to the side no. to get through to the. I'm not going to pursue that adventure. I There's lots of them around. I would do it, but I wouldn't like it. <laughs> I really enjoy that. <laughs> I would do it, but I wouldn't like it. <laughs> Here's a question I like to ask a lot. Um, if you had the opportunity to go to the first uh, crewed mission to Mars, Mm -hmm. would, you, would you sign up? No. Yes. <laughs> Give me 30 seconds. Who said Think yes? About it. Annabelle. Annabelle, cool. What, what if you knew you it was not a return trip? Mm, I was already old, operating on the assumption. If I knew it was a return trip, I might come. Our <laughs> family <laughs> <are> was <laughs> sitting, Steve. <laughs> Have we lived a good life already? <laughs> yeah. Maybe, we, maybe right it, now, no, but maybe, well, maybe, <laughs> I don't know. I'd have to think about it. I think that, that's a important caveat. Yeah. What, whether return you can or return? Not. Yeah. yeah. I would be like first 80 year old woman on Mars <laughs> and be like, sign me up. Uh -huh. Even get. even maybe 75. <laughs> <laughs> Is this yeah. like a crude mission where we've already set up some type of base and they're trying to test out a population of humans or you're like going up mm. there to explore Who's like on the, the Martian? Who's the, you think robots. the ro our robots set up the base? Okay. Uh, I don't know. This yeah. is just the like we we're seeing if a human can make it there trip. Right, exactly. Is it that kind of trip? Mm. Like I'm going to be a martyr for Matt Damon Earth? trip. Is it a Matt Damon trip? <laughs> <laughs> and Matt Damon made it back. Wait, so is Matt Damon there? Is Matt Damon there? there? That's really the question. <laughs> <laughs> this greatly changes my answer. <laughs> 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 the if there's a Matt Damon in my group. So, um, well, <laughs> it wouldn't be there already because this is the first crewed mission. So. Oh, is Matt Damon there? And but is Matt Damon <laughs> on the crewed mission? Am I 80? Is tip the skills? <laughs> am I? Well, how old is Matt Damon then? <laughs> exactly. 85? <laughs> 90? <laughs> a bit older than that. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I don't know right which now. way I should, what, if that I was. I don't uh, know. I feel like he's been around. <laughs> I feel like he looks good for his age. He's been around a little. Yeah, he could be like while. 35 or 80. I don't have any idea. <laughs> <laughs> like Sean Connery. <laughs> Do you like apples? <laughs> I think if my kids were like, all right, we're starting to look into a nursing home, I'd be like, you sign Mars. me up for that Mars trip now. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, okay, that's cool. But you don't think by the time you're 75 that we'll already have had a crewed mission to Mars? Oh, I hope we have. I'm sure we will, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. sure. Maybe. Yeah. I <laughs> think so. It's been so long since Elon Musk has called me. <laughs> we need to catch up. <laughs> Fallen behind on a correspondence. <laughs> well done. I love Thank the way you, you say correspondence. Correspondence. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Atalanta. Atalanta. <laughs> Would you go in a deep sea submersible? Yes. 100% yes. yes. Sure. Absolutely, without even hesitation. Is anyone else, an, is anyone here a no on the deep sea submersible? I'm, I'm, I'm on the fence. You're on the fence? Oh, yeah. no. I'm jumping that thing. I've Quick. already been, yeah. so I can't answer. <gasps> Which really? submersible? Yeah. We need to hear about Whoa, this. That was, that yeah. was a lot. What? Did someone ask a question? <laughs> <laughs> Which we need submersible to hear about this. <laughs> did you travel in? Uh, I have had the opportunity to dive in the Johnson Sea Link which uh, uh, used to be operated by Harbor Branch Oceanographic. It's a plexiglass sphere type sub. That plexiglass. That I don't know how yeah. deep it can go, but it's just for shallow water work. Okay. Uh, cool. Like less than a kilometer, let's say. Um, and then I've also done several dives in the Alvin. That is so cool. That is cool. So super cool. So cool. I've been inside two submersibles, but I haven't dove in them. I'm just been inside of them. Hmm. I've only looked and touched some, but I've never been inside. How many people does Alvin accommodate at once? Three. Three. Did you have a full crew? 
It always go it's pretty always much always three. goes down with two. Oh yeah, three. Unless there's like some really special circumstance. Well, how long um, were? How long was your mission or your multiple missions? A uh, dive in Alvin typically starts right after breakfast um, and comes up right before dinner. So they're oh, generally wow. about so eight to nine civilized. hours. Wow. Um, so civilized. <laughs> <laughs> well, they always want to do it during daylight hours and get as many hours as they can um, because recovering or launching in the dark is very difficult because it requires swimmers to attach um, the sub for recovery uh, and also to detach it for launch. So, don't want to do that in the dark. Mm. So our, our tech chief, Mark, used to be an Alvin swimmer, I hear. Yes. Really? Oh, I really? did not know that. Oh my gosh, we're so learning cool. about cool. everybody. I think. Factoids. Everybody's cool history. We should, we could ask him. That's wild. To confirm, yeah. since nobody knew that. Huh. Couple questions from viewers. Uh, someone is wondering, is this the last dive? It is not. Um, how about how many do we have left? I can't quite remember. Oh, if only we had a magic ball. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, we anticipate having at least three, maybe more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so we'll be back in the water in about 10 hours, um, launching at 4 a.m. Hawaii time for another dive uh, here on Nootka Seamount, but a shallower dive um, where we think the animal density will be a bit higher. Uh, then we will return to King George Seamount, which is where we started our diving sequence many weeks ago now, <laughs> um, for another midwater dive. Um, and then we might do a summit dive on King George as well. Uh, we'll see. And then depending on how all that goes and some extra mapping we want to do, maybe we'll get a fourth dive. Cool. Yeah, so a couple more to go. You can still stay tuned and go on to nautiluslive.org to keep up with us and look at updates, but still a few more to go. Uh, front row, have an ROV question for you all. Cool. Someone is asking, when you trained to operate the manipulator arms in the ROVs, did you use a virtual, virtual reality simulator program? Does one even exist? No, if you tune in to uh, future launches, you'll see me practicing as I learn to use it for the first time. Um, on our first dive, we did it in blue water like this because there is less to hit, <laughs> fewer things to destroy, fewer boats to accidentally punch. <laughs> um, so, you know, you've got a, a wider range of motion with less risk involved in right. the blue water. And then, um, I think I practiced, what, by picking up a rock very slowly, and Trevor put it in the box for me a couple times, and then I picked up a rock and I learned how to put it in the box myself. So it's baby steps, but it's all very much with the real thing. Right into the deep end, guys. Learn by doing. Do we know if there are any ROV simulator programs out there? Maybe. I don't know. I've heard there are. Do you know Trevor? Yeah, I there are sense. simulated ROV things for industrial ROVs, commercial oil and gas stuff. Um, but that's when they have one simulator for it's an identical clone of I don't know the 500,000 ROVs that are nearly identical. So it's pretty niche, and also I've heard not that helpful. Mm. Oh. Our headings are getting slightly off. Is That's that okay? That's right for now, yeah. Okay. Stephen, a viewer followed up to your question and said, "Would you go in a homemade deep sea <laughs> sub?" <laughs> I don't know what kind, what does that mean. <laughs> Homemade. <laughs> what um, does that mean? <laughs> I mean, I think we would Hercules have to know. Well, the one I went in, uh, I guess home. I don't know. Homemade is. They're all kind of unique. Yeah. I, I don't know if there's any duplicates. So. Yeah. Um, they're all kind of prototypes, aren't they? Like in somebody's backyard, homemade, with some like <laughs> <laughs> Home Depot oh, run. Yeah. <laughs> deep Actually, sea one, of the, one of the ones I did go inside of to rig up some GoPros was on a personal dock behind someone's home mm. in Honduras. Cool. Wow. I'm trying to remember the name of it. 
It's like they're now like kind of semi submersibles now that people are buying for their yachts, aren't there? Yep. That's they like existed the new, for a while now. Ooh. The new trend. Not just your yacht, but your support yacht. <laughs> oh, like for go? a leisure? Yes. Oh, yeah. wow. And I'll how deep do they go? Depends on the model. Wow. A couple hundred meters or more. Oh. Interesting. Ida Bell was the submersible in Honduras. Mm. Oh, cool. Would you guys ever stay in like an underwater hotel? Sure. Yeah. Just yeah. saying that because I really want to go to the one in Dubai. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it sounds like it was made for all of us. <laughs> I don't know. You said, <laughs> what's the, yeah, what's the attraction? You're just underwater? <laughs> well, you'd yeah. probably have a big window, I'm assuming, and you could see out into a reef, I'm so guessing. Cool, like yeah. Just making this up in my head. There's one in Dubai. Let me see what that one's Ashton, called. Ashton, are you looking at my computer? I'm not. <laughs> you should be. Oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> oh, let's see. That. Yeah, it seems like your whole, yeah, your whole, I like, think ceiling. Are some oh. of these just prototype? Like, I think do There's actually one in Dubai really? that's, like, up and running and, like, but I don't know if it's, like, within a giant, like, aquarium that they have inside somewhere or if it's, like, literally off the coast. I'm not sure. Do you want me to slow down through this section, Trevor? I or don't think we need to slow down, but going. I definitely want to watch it carefully because this yeah. one will dictate the next 7,000 layers on top of it. So. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, it's within a an aquarium, a giant, giant aquarium. They oh. put your room in there, which Can makes sense because they have to stock it with all of the mm. charismatic... <laughs> Fauna. But could people see, it, like, is it the type of aquarium where you're walking and you look into the tank and then you see someone's room as well? <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> like that, would make it, that would make it a lot that would less be appealing. would be very weird. Um, I don't know. Like, are you part of the turns. exhibit? Is that what you're saying? It's at Atlantis. <laughs> yeah. It's like you're part of the zoo. Right. You are one of the animals. You are the attraction. <laughs> These are my helpless. <laughs> Welcome back. Hi, guys. Our dinner relief is here, and we'll rejoin you again later. Dinner time. Justin here in for Annabelle. Hey, Justin. Welcome to the oh, blue yeah. water. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what I miss? We were talking about what adventurous activities that we would never do. So for me, it was base jumping, um, different forms of type rope over canyons. That's a no-go. Um, we were talking about if we would be a part of the first like human group to like test out Mars. Huh. And uh, most of us said no to that. Um, well, it depends if Matt Damon was there from the Martian <laughs> that we were talking about. I think yeah, that that was that was part of the discussion. And yeah, there the were discussion. plenty of potatoes. <laughs> An interesting time to jump into the conversation. <laughs> I should watch that movie. I read the book and I really enjoyed it's, it, but I haven't. It's watched actually it. good. It's very good. I think yeah. it's one of his best performances, honestly. Okay. I thought it was great. Shelby's our. <laughs> what, what would you say, film connoisseur? Um, All of the above. Are yeah. we talking about The Martian? <laughs> yes. Cinephile. That is very good. Thank you, Val. Back me up. Very good. Yeah. That pretty much captures um, science mentality and, you know, working our way around problems, trying to make decisions on the fly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I just remember being so impressed with his character. I was like, who is this guy? Like growing food from like, it was just right? it was like yeah. wild. This is why you put botanists in space. I actually things. saw that movie, believe it or not. I thought it was good. It's very good. I enjoyed it. <laughs> That and was I like one of your few movies for the year? My, my few <laughs> movies for the year, yeah. It was movie number three. <laughs> I don't know. I don't see too, a whole lot of movies either, so. 2019, um, movie right. number Going three. Going to dinner. I'll be back soon, guys. Bon go eat. Enjoy. Yeah, try, I try to go see a few year, rent something, but it's it's been much more sparse, uh, given um, we have a wee bit of pandemic going on. Just a wee pandemic. Just a wee bit. I also don't have a car at the moment, so uh, uh, that, that limits things. I'm uh, pretty much 100% bike commuter at the moment. I think most of my movie watching is on planes when I'm traveling to various hitches. Gotcha. Yeah. You know, it used to be I couldn't sleep on planes for the longest time, and I don't know, the longer I, I stay in academia, the more that's just like, I try to get a little work done, and that's just what puts me to sleep. And then I'm just like, I, I'm just like, eh. So that's key, huh? <laughs> I don't know. Bring some work to do? I guess. It, it gets a little wild sometimes when folks ask what you do, and yeah, like, no. it's just, mm -mm. I like, Isotope stuff can be such a niche topic that you're just like, okay, how do how do I how do I even like get into this without watching their eyes immediately glaze over? Ah, uh, you know that's uh, it, so I, I I don't know I try to try to keep it um, more volcano oriented these days. Yeah, that's exciting. I love that that's an option. It's just a little bit more volcano oriented. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I tend to start that conversation with, I work on ships. Yeah. Yeah. And so like, oh, cool. Let's move on. Uh, yeah. Then that's fine. <laughs> yeah. What, what do you do? And you're like, Bingo. Well, we put robots in the ocean, and then they're like, get all googly eyed, and you're like, no, 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 no. It's I'm a plumber. I'm a deep sea plumber. <laughs> 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 but that's so cool. You're just like so smart, and you're like, I'm no normal, normal turn wrench. I just turn a wrench. <laughs> It, it drives my boss a little bit nuts when uh, I like to describe my job as just, you know, uh, I'm basically a highly trained cleaner of things. Yeah. Because <laughs> literally that's what I do. I clean a lot of different things. You run the saw? Yeah, mm -hmm. she runs the saw. I clean the saw, too. <laughs> <laughs> and herself, so a good coating. <laughs> yeah. Cle try to clean the decks. They're going to have to get cleaned more later, though. Yeah. I've got a little work ahead of me on the transit. Ooh, uh, both of us. Down there. I kind of, you want to do that again? It took one second in that. One second, I'm looking it? away. No, I, I would like literally look down. <laughs> the only time you did. <laughs> yeah. I think maybe Stop we want to do that again. Pay it back. Yeah, yeah Raj. About a, about a whole wrap. Raj. So it's where like the junction box comes back into view. Yeah. So I saw the slurp of the uh, C pen from down in the lounge. Yeah. That was that was pretty right nice work. Yeah, that's gross. Oh boy, that now it's snapped two back. Let's just go a whole other one. I'm gonna do that again. <laughs> it's worth doing. It's worth doing twice, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. This one sets us up for success for the rest of the life. Life, yeah. <laughs> Everything else is gonna be more shallow than this, right? Yeah. Rock. Yes. Yeah, right there. It's got a weird. I don't know. I don't know what to believe. Oh, Lord. You so have any more? Yeah, I do, if you don't mind. I don't mind. And Mark's so on it, he has fresh water running on the cable before it comes in here because we're so much deeper than normal. It's getting the salt off so it doesn't just sit there. Rinsing it off as it comes in. These yeah. are the things these guys know how to do. Mm, Keep we don't the like corrodium our... off. Yep, okay. exactly. Mm -hmm. We do not like salty cables around Happy. here. Yes. Now to go forth into the yonder. <laughs> the time is nigh to retract. Lay down your cable. <laughs> 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 this is what Watch With Me is like. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Oh, good. I'm glad. See, that went on gross. 
it just went on gross. Well, there is a spot. It has to be deeper gross. In that has to be gross. Yeah. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Mm. I just don't, don't like the snappage. It's just like where the grossness concentrates. Yes. Snappage and grossness. Technical terms here. I suppose Jess is eating oh, first, yeah. eh? Which cables? I think, um... <laughs> Roger. Food wasn't out yet when I walked in a minute ago, too, so she might See, be... See right there, it's garbage. It's disgusting. Yucky. Yuck. So we are just now coming to uh, a depth that usually we start our dives at. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> huh, I hadn't thought mm. about it that way. Yeah, about where we'll be uh, more or less getting things Actually, rolling tomorrow. Yeah. I think a little lower. Um, Even a little lower. Yeah. More time for me to study up on my inverts. Yeah, we're going to see a uh, more familiar version of uh, Nootka tomorrow for folks who've been following along on this cruise. You'll see some things probably that we've uh, been seeing in some other locations, but probably also some different things because that's just how it's been going. What side are we headed uh, over to? Uh, I think the opposite side. <laughs> 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 so that would be the northeast corner? Uh, something like that. Let okay, me go great. double check. All right. Just I don't have my I laptop in front of me, so no worries. Um, I uh, information will be forthcoming shortly, I'm sure. Well, I, I can look it up. So behave yourself as I wait for the document to load. I'll give that a minute. Well, I hope uh, I hope we're able to uh, get a decent range of things today, given. Uh, this was a uh, interesting dive with uh, some interesting decisions by me. <laughs> but I, I think we have some happy biologists, and we have some we have some rocks that we are very excited to cut open because, uh, yeah, we don't know what's going to be in them. We don't know how thick these uh, manganese crusts are, but they look like they're ten up. centimeters. This is when I spit up last time. Or five, Raj. <laughs> My neck hurts. Yeah, I'm super curious to see what kind of crust we get. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, if anything else, today's dive has convinced me that super um, ergonomic. <laughs> there is definitely some stuff happening in this volcano in the Cretaceous. Because those lavas are crusty. That's good. Don't jinx it. <laughs> <laughs> It's not in the box yet, right? Like, you don't count your sample before it's in the box. So am I not going to count this wrap until, until you're halfway across the drum? Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know how else you get 10 centimeters of mag uh, manganese, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't Just a lot of time. Count it until it's a little fleet. <laughs> I like this policy. What's the deepest dive that y'all have been part of? Because I know you've been around for a while. Hello. Give Beach me that Ridge. back. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Brett. Um, four, five, four, four, five, two, five. That wasn't. Oh, wow. uh, I didn't have any relation to that, by the way. So. Nailed it. If uh, if there's an issue, it's it's deeper, and I didn't know how to fix it. Deeper in the system. This seems fine. Yeah. Four, five, two, five meters. Four, you want to send it? Five, yeah. I don't know. You, you, you cheese it. You cheese the call. Send it. Fodge. <laughs> <laughs> Auto depth revoked. <laughs> <laughs> so where was that dive at? Um, that was, where was I? Brain. Think. Um, the 9 North EPR. Ooh. It's Pacific Rise Hydrothermal Vent Station. With 9 the North? Nine degrees north of the equator. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. With the Sylvan Lab out of Texas A&M um, on the Atlantis with the Alva Group. That's cool. That EPR cool. has some very interesting latitudes on it. I got my uh, styrofoam cup to remind me of that depth. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yes. What about you guys? Hmm. Mine's 39.50. That's Right at the edge, isn't it? It sure is, <laughs> yeah. Where was that? That was uh, on a seamount near Mexico, off Baja. Was that the uh, trip where y'all saw the sperm whale on the way down? No, that was before my time. 
I think that was in the, was the sperm whale in the Gulf? I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't know, don't quote me on that. I think Before I've I heard around. that from the stories, but I don't know either. Did you, were you on the, on the uh, sperm whale cruise? Sperm whale cruise, were you on that one? No, Suleiman was not on that one. I'll have to track down the story. I've only heard bits and pieces. The Hawaiian the word for sperm whale is palawa. The lore. Not to be confused with the humpback whale, which is kohola. Which, by the time we get back to Hawaii, they will mostly be on their way back to Alaska. But they come and visit us in the January, winter. January, February, thereabouts. Yeah. Maybe November, late December, December too. January, yeah. February, even a little bit into March. Oh, really? Yeah. But what is it? Actually, I'm, it's no, we're April, in April now. So oh, my gosh, they, yeah. yeah. So have they begun their migration then? It's yeah. pretty late, yeah. yeah. Time, what is time? <laughs> when you're uh, on the ship, I have no idea what the date is. It's you're on ship time yeah. now. Like, yeah, it starts to. It's this thing that does numbers, and when the numbers are certain numbers, we do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what? What did I miss? <laughs> the number, the number, and the right number. We do stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, Roger. I think I've done two of those stuff. Well, three of those. Thrice. Thrice. Yeah. <laughs> but if, oh, what was that? If you do happen to come to Hawaii to see the kohola or the humpback whales, um, there's so actually sea a Hawaiian Islands humpback whales national marine oh, sanctuary. Is, so there are protected waters uh, across multiple islands, but our visitor center is in Kihei. There's some very cool people there. You should, you should definitely go visit. Thanks. I saw a lot of whales this year. Did you? Oh, very yeah. glad we revisited. It was really fun. Me too. Yeah. Mm. Usually, like, ju it looked like a, an adult and a juvenile, and the juvenile would kind of play around trying to figure out breaching. Ah. Uh, so it was just going crazy. Yeah. That's fun. Breaching is a cool concept because you think about how large those animals are. And no. how much force would yeah. take to propel them out of the water? And then, yeah. if any of you have ever tried swimming, <laughs> imagine <laughs> swimming so fast you could come out of the water. What? Yeah, exactly. It's incredible. And the, but then, like, why? Why did they do it? Wouldn't Nobody, you? Nobody. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I could, I guess. Absolutely. I, I mean, is it sheer like joy and play, yeah. or is it like some sort of signal? Why do we jump? Or you know? Yeah, I don't think joy. there's a settled agreement on it. I think there's multiple yeah. Yeah. hypotheses out there. Jump there up, are a number, even jump from another perspective. Very I've heard potentially there? a little bit like getting the sea lice off, but unlikely that that would be the only reason. Joy, yeah. the kind of the fun play, I've definitely heard that too. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the whale biologists that I've worked with, um, yeah. What I'm else do they say? Those were two of the predominant theories. The other one was like signaling, perhaps, like mm -hmm. that sound and that amount of force. Kind of like the like pec slaps they do. Yeah, exactly. Like but. Yeah. Yeah. Not quite sure about that. Need to study that more. Yeah. If you all want to see some very cool uh, videos on, on humpback whales if you go to uh, the office of national marine sanctuary's webpage and go to the multimedia section um, they've really done a cool job in the last couple of years to update our webpage and, and make it really easy to find our oh. best best products oh my gosh you're already back okay <laughs> you eat really fast <laughs> <Slurp>. <laughs> all right i'll give you back Annabelle because she's so great <laughs> I was glad to see that you guys were able to get a little bit of time on bottom before uh, you took off. Yeah. We and had we some serious quick action. Yeah. Bottom time. Yeah. Two biological Crap samples. Crap. That was that great. Was it was very exciting. That was very efficient. Yeah, we uh, after we did that um, swing back to go and uh, get the primnoid, 
Um, yeah, we started booking it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it's not necessarily always finishing the race per se, but it's, you know, just trying to make the most of the time that you have there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. A very different site with some very different uh, challenges for the teams. Yeah, in addition to being very deep. Yeah. Did you, so after we came in, and we collected that one sea star. We then saw those little white sea stars everywhere. I don't think they were all the same species, but they were those like cookie sea stars. Had you seen a lot of those cookie sea stars before? So we were seeing uh, those sea stars uh, pretty much since not long after we got on bottom. So oh, wow. uh, during uh, the morning watch and uh, they zoomed on one of them and like, uh, yeah, it's um, was it the Gunny Astrid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, uh, we got an ID on one of those and um, just kind of moved on and we kept seeing them throughout and we okay. thought that they were all one species so we just kind of noted them and moved on uh -huh. and then uh, yeah we just kind of took a zoom on that one and we're like oh that's different mm, cool. so um, yeah that that kind of changed plans and then at that point we were calling it a move so we had to we had to swing and come back uh -huh. so um, cool. yeah we actually did a uh, <laughs> We actually backed the ship up twice today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little fried because that was like one of those on the fly decisions, and yeah. I'm not good at deciding things fast. <laughs> so, well, you did great. You got great samples. So, uh, yeah, I hope so. Done. It, it's, been, it was a challenge with the rocks because um, they're deceptive. Mm. Uh, yeah, Dwight got um, an estimate of about 10 centimeters on the manganese crusts. And things that look like loose cobbles were not loose cobbles. Mm -hmm. they, most of them were glued down. So, yeah, you'd, you'd try to grab something that looked like an easy sample, and it was just not going to budge. It yeah. was not coming. So We picked wow. up these, right. uh, these rocks for Beth. They're about, I don't know, maybe the size of a, a baseball, but they're like, well, two of them about the size of a baseball stuck together. Yeah. And then the third one, maybe the size of an egg, and they're, they're just all... All like, stuck together. Yeah, all yeah. stuck together like That's a snowman. So, cool. <laughs> so we got like see that. three or something, and they all just they, they all just hung out long enough that they just grew together over time. Yeah. So we'll see we'll see what's in them. Cool. Speaking of which, I'm gonna hand uh, the console back over to Beth and uh, go get some food. So we'll see you on uh, next 12 to 4 watch. Thanks, Val. One of our viewers wrote in and said that the sperm whale sighting was in 2015 below mm. the Gulf of Mexico off the coast of Louisiana. Okay, so it was indeed the Gulf. Yeah. That's an awesome video. And that video can be found on the EV Nautilus YouTube channel. Web. If you're just joining us, we are ascending after a, a dive of the Nootka Seamount. It's a, just a 12-hour dive. Uh, we're going to be revisiting a different section of the Nootka Seamount, a little more shallow uh, depth, in about 12 hours or so, 11 hours. 4 o'clock in the morning, our time. We had a very geology-rich dive today. Mm. Lots of ferromanganese crust on those rocks. Not a whole lot of uh, fauna growing on them, but we did find some unique samples. So mm -hmm. what we did see was pretty neat. And we did have an octopus sighting on our watch. You um, did? Yeah, it was in the it was in the uh, Atalanta cam instead. It was like above Hercules. Oh. So. That's so cool. So, have you had two? We've had two uh, octopus yeah. views. Yeah, we, oh. we saw one with with Hercules a few days ago, and then and there was a a third one that we kind of saw a blob. We didn't really identify it. Uh, that was earlier on in the 
Wow. Which that's the cruise, so. So what type of octopus do you think you saw today? I'm pretty, pretty sure it was a Dumbo octopus because you could oh, see the nice. little, little wings on the side of the head. I'm so jealous. But that's awesome. Yeah. Hercules just wasn't high enough in the water to get a, a mm. good view of it. Mm -hmm. That was pretty cool. I have a question for the pilots. Um, what is your favorite part of piloting an ROV? Uh, manipulator training. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you're doing right now? What? No. <laughs> yeah. Kylie's cross training. Sure, that's fine. Whatever you want. Kylie's already pretty well trained on the manip. She's trying a new strategy here, a new technique, just to get some more variety, varied experience. One of our viewers is sharing that they really enjoy the excitement in our voices every time we find some new sea life on on camera. Hey, I was off SPL when you asked the favorite part about piloting. Oh, go But for it. my answer is I used to say I like when things break, <laughs> but now I just say I like when things break get fixed the first time because <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I like jinxed myself I like I like when you get to s I like ops right I like launching and recovering and I like sampling and I like being able to troubleshoot problems and to get a new um, understanding of like ooh, how that thing works that is just norm normally normally always works and then you get to like figure out actually like the connection to its other counterparts um, when you're like troubleshooting. I love that. Mm.
we're at a depth of 2,328 meters and rising. Uh, as we're rising up, the water temperature is slowly creeping up. It was about one and a half degrees Celsius. It's working its way up toward two degrees Celsius. Not a lot of difference, but after we get up closer to the surface, we'll see a big jump in temperature. Oxygen concentration is decreasing steadily as we get up into that oxygen minimum zone. There's a certain depth in the, in the water column where oxygen levels go down. That's not at the surface or at the bottom. It's in the middle there somewhere. So we have a, a new viewer uh, curious as to what we're doing. Um, right now, uh, our ROVs, the remotely operated vehicles, Hercules and Atalanta are being pulled back up um, slowly by a, a winch toward the EV Nautilus, which is our research vessel. Um, they'll probably take another, I think, hour, hour and a half to get up to the top. Um, We'll be launching again at 4 o'clock Hawaii time t tomorrow morning. So that's uh, 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time or 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Or you can do the math for whatever other <laughs> standard time. Um, so uh, we've been diving on unexplored seamounts, which are uh, underwater mountains that don't quite reach the surface. Um, the one we dove on today is particularly deep. We went down uh, 3,500 meters and worked our way up by about 300 meters up one side of the slope, and we'll be diving again on Nuka Seamount again tomorrow. And uh, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Shelby. Thanks, Chris. Tomorrow. We're launching at 4 a.m.
We collected a sea star and a uh, sea pen. <coughs> and we dropped a ballast rock. <laughs> we did. Do we know how long the dive will be tomorrow or the, the next the next dive? It could be spreading rumors, but I thought it was 16 hours for the dive tomorrow. Yeah, the dive plan hasn't been posted yet. We're still working that out, but Got likely it. 16. Got it. Before watch change, we were talking about the like hard no activities we would never do. Like we're oh, all fairly right. adventurous, but what are the things we'd never do? So what what's your stress? <laughs> things that we would never do. Yeah. Yeah. I like, said I would never base jump. Yeah, yeah, I would never do that. I was thinking something along those lines. <laughs> I was like, there's gotta be a limit there, and I think that's it. <laughs> I draw the line where there's nothing attached to me that will save me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I don't, I, yeah, I'm not that type of adrenaline junkie where I want to jump out of uh, airplanes and off of bridges and stuff like that. So probably all those things. <laughs> like everything, pretty much. I don't think I would base jump, but I would ski base jump. Oh, what? interesting. Oh. What's the difference? Like going like off on skis. Uh, okay. Anything, <laughs> anything with skis involved, that I would probably dangerous. do. Um, How big of a drop do you think that would be, Annabelle? What? What kind of drop would that be when they do that? It is so cool. They do, it's like a cliff. It's, it looks awesome. Oh is something gosh. attached to you to save you if you don't land right or something? <laughs> yeah, parachute. Um, I think oh, so. You have a parachute? Oh. Some of them just have like parasites. Sail, uh, sails? I don't See, know if that's... then I'm afraid I'm going to get impaled by the ski if I don't <laughs> land right. No, they're so yeah. cool. These videos are <laughs> awesome. Okay, these are the things you have to think about. <laughs> Look at this. Amazing. And they just, like, ski off cliffs, and then they, like, touch down on other... Because that's a, when you're skiing, you can go, like, from one cliff to the other cliff, oh. and then take off again. And so it's not, it's not, like, just one big jump. I have seen people do that. I didn't realize that's... What? That's base jump skiing. Wow. That's crazy. That I mean, maybe it's not called that. Skiing. No, I don't know I what it's called. I could be totally that wrong. That is so cool. I'm I sure it's probably skiing that. with something attached to you, and then skiing without something attached <laughs> to you is probably base jump. Yeah. <laughs> base jump ski, whatever that you want to call that. Just be sure to bring Dan's GoPro. <laughs> <laughs> I probably would never juggle swords. That would not be something else I would never do. Oh, yeah, no sword swallowing? No sword swallowing, no, no. Oh. for sure. Mm -mm. Nope. Um. And another just number of things on Fear Factor when that was a thing back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> People eating different random parts of things just was too much for me. Laying in sarcophagus. Sarcophagi, sarcophaguses. Is that word like octopuses? <laughs> Is there it hasn't been corrected. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I have no idea what the I plural of that word is. There are always sarcophagi of random creatures. <laughs> I'm not sure. I probably, depending on the creature, would avoid that one. Yeah. Like if it was sea cucumbers. I'd be on the fence. <laughs> 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 to eat them or to like lay in a oh. bag of them? I, it would be a hard no on the eating like a raw sea cucumber. Oh, God. What? But mm. That's a thing. I not raw, lay in, but sea cucumber. Is really? A yeah. Have you had it? No. How about to say it good? <laughs> I 
Has anyone ever eaten? I'm always so um, impressed and scared by people who still eat the octopus tentacles that are still moving. Oh. Oh. Oh, wow. oh. I get scared that it's going to like suction to my throat, <laughs> right? <On the> <laughs> I've never <laughs> thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a delicacy in some parts of the world, and it's like fresh, like nerves still jumping tentacle arms, and uh. it's very super fresh, super oh. fresh seafood, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't think I can do that. Hey, Lynette. Are you on SPL? I am now. <laughs> a little birdie told me that you're a part of Axe Ladies, and I now need to know what yeah. that is. Sounds super cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so there is a all lady entertainment lumberjack show based <gasps> out of what? Maine. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and they travel yes. all around the country and do shows. Um, yeah, we do chainsaw racing, um, axe throwing, chopping, sawing. Holy, log rolling. Absolutely, this is amazing. Oh my gosh. All kinds of so how did you get cool. into yeah, this? Yeah, we have to know. You can't, we need backstory. <laughs> um, well, I grew up in northern Wisconsin, which is where the Lumberjack World Championships are every year. So I grew up going to that. Um, but I never really did it until I went to college. Mm. I did my undergrad in Madison, Wisconsin, and there's a log rolling club there. So I started log rolling there. And then when I went to grad school in New Hampshire, they have a lumberjack club. Um, and so I joined that, uh -huh. and that's where I learned to do all of the sawing and chopping and things like that. That is awesome. Wow. Like, wow. That's such a cool skill set. I know. That's so cool. Yeah. Holy smokes. Thank you. That's amazing. So you guys compete kind of nationally then? or? Um, so uh, Axe Women is an entertainment lumberjack show. So um, we s sort of compete against each other, but it's like there's no stakes. You know, it's, um, yeah, it's meant for like entertaining crowds. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but a lot of the people who participate with Axe Women um, compete professionally, um, and they compete all around the country and the world. Very cool. Yeah. Do you know where it like originated? Is it something that originated in the Americas or somewhere else, like the sport? Yeah. As far as I know, um, in the U.S., it originated in logging camps. Mm. Um, so loggers, when they had some free time, they would just like, you know, compete against each other. Like, I can chop this tree down faster than you can, <laughs> or um, I can stay on the log in the water longer than you can. Um, Got it. So like I rodeo. It's kind of like yeah. rodeo. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah, that's cool. It's very Paul Bunyan. <laughs> <laughs> Pauline Bunyan. There. Pauline Bunyan. Bunyan. That's cool. I like that. That's awesome. Thanks, Lynette, for sharing. That was interesting. Yeah, you're welcome. How does that work logistically? Like, you ha where do, where are these held so that there are <laughs> things to saw down and? Such. Yeah, so a lot of the events are at like uh, state fairs, county fairs, things like that. Um, so they travel around with a big trailer uh, with all of their supplies and then they source wood locally. Mm. Cool. Yeah. That's very cool. Is there a certain type of wood that you like prefer chopping to a certain type that you hate <laughs> chopping? <laughs> White pine all the way. The best chopping wood. Nice soft. Yeah, it's nice <laughs> and soft. It's really it yeah. 
it's really nice to chop. We see you, Ikea. <laughs> <laughs> no hardwoods, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Like, it's, like, there are competitions all over the world. And in the U.S., we pretty much always chop softwoods in competition. Um, but it's also a really big sport in New Zealand and Australia. Mm. And they Ooh. chop hardwoods. Oh, oh man. Oh, yeah. Intense. That's awesome. Yeah. What did we say the fish was that sticks to the um, whale shark? The remoras? Yeah. What can you tell us about remoras, Jess? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what do you guys want to know about remoras? <laughs> <laughs> tell us everything. <laughs> <laughs> they attach on to whale sharks and sharks with a modified dorsal fin. That becomes a suction disc that has these fleshy lips on it and then these hard spinules, we call them. It's like a bony structure that has little small protrusions coming out of it called spinules that are really hard. Uh, one cool thing about them is that they're kind of blunt tipped and then they like ratchet into the surface that there is. Oh. Because like they're subjected to a lot of shear forces and shear loads, huh. mm -hmm. like flows and stuff. And so a lot of like sharks, for instance, have what are called denticles. So they're like really small scales almost. And these little spinules are, have very similar spatial frequency to these um, denticles. And so you can actually like ratchet into the surface that you're on. Huh. And then like the suction cup like keeps you stuck. So they suction with a oh. modified fin, not with their mouth. Yeah, with the modified fin, yeah. Interesting. So they don't feed off of like something on the whale shark. They, they, do they then feed like as the whale shark swims around? I, I, think, they, I think they do act as like um, cleaners as well so mm -hmm. they like you know they'll roomba around a little bit and then like stick back on that is um, so, oh. so it, like, interesting it, yeah it's so crazy right like because they're increasing the fluid drag a little bit against the, from the organism like you have to provide some beneficial service or else it's just like a freeloader you know what I mean yeah like, get off yeah. me you're just making me exert more energy so <laughs> there's like a give and take there does it cause any damage to no, no you sh they have like a, a mutually beneficial relationship. Okay. So, cool. yeah. Very cool. What was it called again? I'm sorry. The remoras. Okay. They, yeah, I'll, I'll, the R E M O R A. Now how R -E -M -O -R -A. big are they? Remora. Ah, okay. uh, good question. I think they probably come in all sizes, hey? They're probably this big, what I'm going to guess. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I haven't, I haven't like dissected one in person. <laughs> all from pictures and papers but cool that is cool yeah super cool creatures are they are there any other fish that use a dorsal modified dorsal fin suction cup suction thing what was that steve are there any other fish that have a modified dorsal fin for suction probably but I'm, none are jumping to my mind right oh. now i know a lot of ones like ventral like ones on their bellies but oh I don't know so many of that are dorsal. Yeah. yeah. And then there's ones like the oral suckers as well. Mm -hmm. Cool. Crazy, crazy world. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we might want to start slowing pretty soon. All right, let's do it. Coming down. I mean, if I just load too much, I can. Yeah. Are things looking okay on the winch? 
They are. This is, I think, the most we've unwound it because it's the deepest dive. Okay. So I, it's kind of a chance to correct the weirdness, but ah. it's also a chance for the weirdness to pop up again. Gotcha. By weirdness, I just mean that that layer of right tether is not laying flat. Zero my Z bias here, so you can take your time. A little bit of a gap there. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Saw that a little bit. Is sort of moving Andrew. slower the best way to try to avoid like those weird things in the um, in the winch, or is just it happens regardless? Like. A little bit of both. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Too. Hello. It's like Mario. He comes up the the hatch and somewhere else, you know. Mm Thanks, Jess. Someone's wondering, are we washing the 68 cable as it's getting reeled in? Is that the tether? I don't know what that means. No clue what that means. 68. 68 cable. 68 cable. Are we washing the 68 cable as they reel it in? I don't know. Yes, we are. Yes. There's water running outside. How do they know? I that? just turned it off. Oh, did you? Okay, we were. <laughs> we were washing said cable. Well, we're definitely watching. I didn't know we were washing. <laughs> washing, like wash. I don't know. But we are watching. And it's called the 6.8 because it's 0.68 inches in diameter? Yeah. Oh, well, thanks, because I definitely thought it was 68. I was like, what is the 68 cable? <laughs>
front row, I was wondering, when you were like first sort of learning how to like maneuver the arms, like what was the most difficult part? Like, was it like moving it in and out, trying to open up the claws, trying to like rotate things? Like what was sort of the most difficult, I guess, like move with the arms that was hard for you to master? Uh, you go first, Trevor. Like the hardest part was coordinating the joints. Mm. Every single one individually is super easy to move, but trying to do two, three, seven at once is the hard part. Mm. That's, that's my answer. Makes sense. Yeah, it kind of seems to like be this fine line between think out how every little joint is moving or like move intuitively. Because mm -hmm. the like intuitive moving can work until you're doing something complicated and then you kind of want to know where everything's oriented. Mm -hmm. And the learning process jumps back and forth between those two consistently. Interesting. All right, uh, I think we're good to go. Speed up now. Where'd the bar go? Okay, I have a question for the room. Before everyone got into uh, whether you like marine science, ocean science, or before you ended up on the Nautilus, was there something that you wanted to be as a kid that was just completely different? Or have you always sort of wanted to work in the environment or work in the ocean? I wanted to be a chef for a very long time before I switched over to marine science. I wanted to own multiple restaurants and like study Le Cordon Bleu and like France and everything. And then that dream went away. <laughs> but maybe later in life, I'll do it. I don't know. You said, you, so you worked at restaurants? So you, you I wanted to, like when I was, to? when I was a kid, I like wanted to be a chef really bad. Cool and do all that, and then switched over to animals and the environment. But maybe it'll be like a later in life crisis, and I'll pack my things. You heard me talk about, about Chef Tony, huh? right? You heard me talk about Chef Tony or something. We asked him, you asked the question about people, like teachers. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So I used to work in kitchens, but yeah, in restaurants. Do you cook at home a lot, though? Good amount. Hmm. Do you? I do, actually. What's your, like, what's your best dish? My best dish. Um, what's the best thing I think I made? I make a pretty good like whole roasted chicken mm. in the oven. Um, Cajun. Mm -hmm. Cajun rubbed whole chicken. Sounds delicious. It's right now. quite good. <laughs> Not to toot my own whore, but toot toot. It's really good. Mm. It's quite good. Um, I don't think I had a plan of what I wanted to be when I was little, <laughs> so it just kind of, I found, stumbled into it. Oh, that's always cool too. Fate just kind of leads you where you need to be. I was in high school when Planet Earth came out, like the original Planet Earth series, uh -huh. and then I saw the behind the scenes and I was like, oh yeah, that's what that's I want to do. That's it. It <laughs> took me a while to get there. You know, I worked in a lot of other television stuff uh -huh. that was not as interesting, mm -hmm. but... Uh, eventually I got there, yeah. Yeah. Never I mean, thought I would work at sea, though. Here we are. Here we are. You never know. How about you, Diane? Anything you want it to be uh, that's different from sort of what you do now? Mm -hmm. I think when I was a kid, I used to say I was going to be a writer. Oh. 
and nothing ever became of that. <laughs> Mostly because, like, I find writing very laborious. Me too. It's yeah. <laughs> but you still. I like mean, I. I, <laughs> I mean, there's a part of me that enjoys it, but it's so time-consuming. <laughs> just you know, eking out like the the exact word that you want to use, and yeah. Hmm. I think I'm a, a, a better, my skills are better put somewhere else, let's put it that way. <laughs> I feel that, I feel that. How about you guys in the front row other than Steven? What's the question? Uh, was there something that you wanted to be as like a kid that's completely different from what you do now? Or have you always sort of been interested in what you do currently, even when you were little? I think what I wanted to be was different every day, just depending on what career I saw that second. <laughs> that sounds fine, let's do that. <laughs> so I wouldn't read too much into any of that. <laughs> yeah, totally. I think even now, like as a kid and continuing to now, I want to do everything. So <laughs> hard to decide. I plan on not deciding ever. Yeah, you kind of don't have to. You That's don't. the nice thing. You get to have more than one passion in life. Mm -hmm. You do. Oh, speaking of things to do in life, I do want to remind any viewers that are still with us on the blue water, um, especially if you are in college or about to graduate high school, that Ocean Exploration Trust does have several internships that you can get involved in. Um, you just have to be out of high school, I believe, but we have um, ocean science internships. There are video engineering internships. ROV, piloting, mapping, um, so a lot of different things you can get uh, involved in. So if you have been tuning in with us on the last few dives and you've you know really been excited about what we've been doing here on board EV Nautilus, you can have an opportunity to come on yourself and experience it and uh, learn a lot. I believe that the next round of applications for some of these are coming up this summer for 2023 expeditions. So if you are interested, um, you can, I believe, go on nautiluslive.org under maybe education um, to see some of these opportunities um, and sort of, you know, read the descriptions and see what each sort of position entails. Um, so definitely check that out if you're interested. And then there's science communication fellowships, which are usually geared towards graduate students and working professionals. Um, so for that group too, if you know, you're interested in deep ocean exploration, or even if you're not, and you're just intrigued and you are inspired by this type of work and would like to come and be a part of it and help with it, then um, yeah, try out uh, the fellowship, try applying for it. Yeah, I was just looking that up. Internships. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you have to be a student still to apply? Like a current or recent graduate or something? For intern or for SEF? For internship. I think you have to be a current student somewhere. I don't know. Uh, Ashley, you're out of school. Let me read a little bit. I, yeah, it was weird for or me because I was school? a grad student when I applied and got accepted, but then it kept getting delayed because of COVID. Oh, uh, okay. So I finished my master's in August. Got it. Um, I, mm, yeah, so I think. I think you need to be enrolled. I want to say that you need to be enrolled. I don't know if. I thought recent graduate was fair sure. game. Maybe not. 
Does it say on mine? Let's see. I'm, I've just I read the um, they haven't really opened up the applications yet, mm -hmm. so yeah. there's just a kind of a brief s document on the gotcha. website right now, and it it refers to students um, when it's talking about applying, but it doesn't okay. have specific requirements that I see. Got it. <laughs> Smart. I'm not gonna make it a Nautilus, better fail math. <laughs> Maybe just sign up for like underwater basket weaving over the summer somewhere. Yeah. Just underwater get basket weaving. Yeah. What? Oh man. Great cross training. I've seen that daisy chain on the, <laughs> the tether. Yeah. For the viewer wondering what is in cam three, I think that's Atlanta view. When Herc down there. That is Where am I Atlanta wrong? butt camera. Atlanta butt cam. That's what it is. So it's looking off the back of Atlanta. You see the tether that connects the two RVs and you see Hercules off there. The little space look craft looking thing in the distance. Which is they're back to back right now, so they're facing away from each other. Mm. Oh, yeah, 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 I see now. Do we have a medical team on board? I don't think there's a medical team, but there is a medical, medical professional officer, yeah, of some yeah. type, yep, on board, just in case, um, you know, of medical emergencies. So, not a whole team, but we definitely do have an officer on board that can help if need be. Oh, someone has an interesting story about what they thought they were going to be when they grew up. They said, I wandered off during an archaeology field trip when I was six and wound up working a sifter while one of the, while one of the college students took a break and watched me. <laughs> I was the only one that day who actually found any artifacts on that site. And for a couple of years after that, I was sure I'd be a field archaeologist when I grew wow. up. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jamie. <laughs> what do they do? that person do now? I don't know. They didn't say. <laughs> what did they find? Too? Right. Maybe they retired at six. <laughs> right. I retired at six. Quit while you're ahead. <laughs> the movie holds did make me want to be an archaeologist for like five seconds in Jurassic Park, but then I let it go. <laughs> I met an archaeologist recently, and he told me that his job is seasonal in the southwest and consists of a lot of hiking and looking at the ground. <laughs> that sounds um. That does not sound like the worst job. <laughs> no. <laughs> Truly not. Yeah. But it's I guess it's not all digging on. Yeah, with, you know, with brushes. I know, that's what you small think. Small <laughs> tools. And swinging from a ropes a lot, and fighting Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Indiana Jones style. Wait, I was like, wait, that how do we go to Indiana, Indiana Jones, Jones reference? That was an obvious Indiana Jones reference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought he was Take more like a treasure hunter gasps. than like an archaeologist. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the mummy also made me want to be an archaeologist. Thanks, viewer. Nope, sarcophagus or cockroaches. <laughs> what was the one? Like, uh, hit it, something treasure? National, National treasure. treasure. I was very impressed by the movie when I was younger. I was just like, these people are so smart. <laughs> There's a good movie called The Dig that's more recent the about dig. archaeology. Ooh. I'm a movie fiend. I have to look at this up. The Dig. The dig. Oh, it's a British film. Cool. Ooh. What it's are y'all's favorite like shipwreck or offshore adventure movies? 
uh, ocean exploration movies. I feel like there are a few. Um, Pacific Rim is up there for me. I don't know if that's ocean exploration, but I love <laughs> that plot line because <laughs> I love science fiction. Hey, it's all fair game. So yeah, you could say Pearl Harbor and it's fair game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with turns. Pacific. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Pacific Rim and maybe one of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies as like a <laughs> close cool. second. <laughs> Trevor, go I'm to offshore tr movies. I'm trying to remember the name oh. of it. Hold on. Let's see if I can remember. Uh, what is the question? Favorite, like, offshore adventure movie? Ocean Doesn't themed. Doesn't have to be real. <laughs> We've got Pirates of the Caribbean out there. Yep. <laughs> Pacific Rim is yeah. definitely not real, but super cool. No idea. Oh. <sighs> Wasn't there one with Matthew McConaughey? Like a uh, uh, Fool's Gold? Yes. <laughs> this is how much I watch movies, everybody. Oh, you are the person to ask. I've seen it like a billion times. <laughs> 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 I could probably like half recite it. Okay, well, I, how about I could keep watching the, that the one. Meg or Meg or whatever it was called. <gasps> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Deep Blue Sea. It's about the Megalodon. I kind of don't want to admit this. I might be the only person <gasps> in this room who's who not seen it. No, no. I, I joined I you on that. I, don't I have think no I idea think what they're even talking it, about. It would be more embarrassing to admit that you have seen it. Yeah, okay. it's pretty embarrassing yeah. to admit that you have seen it. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a total plane okay, movie. It's a great good. movie to watch on a plane. Because <laughs> if you miss part of it because you fall asleep, that's fine too. Deep Blue Sea, however, I also really love. <laughs> Classic. Who's in that one? Everybody. <laughs> Samuel, L. Cool J, yep, L. L. Cool J. He's like the cool <laughs> chef guy. Samuel Jackson's in there. Yep. <laughs> the Abyss. Do we know uh, the this Abyss? Movie? That's, the a, that's Abyss. a good one. Yeah. The Abyss. The Abyss. That's worthwhile to watch. Have that I one. seen that? Abyss. Uh, I don't oh. think I've seen this one. That's the James Cameron one. Life of Pi. I mean, I never watched the movie, but I read the book. Has anybody seen Life of Pi? Life of Pi, you say? The yeah. movie, yeah. I've seen the movie. I want Is to. Is it good? Okay. Is it about the Life Aquatic? Yep, Life Aquatic. Good one. Oh, that's a documentary. Someone said there's a documentary called My Octopus Teacher. Has anybody ever? Oh, yeah, it's oh, amazing. Somebody you mentioned that, that the other day. No, oh. they said they cried. It, it, my dog has seen that one more than I've seen it. <laughs> That's the one you put out for your dog, yeah. huh? <laughs> My octopus. It's a really amazing, like, it's a good story about, like, this guy and this octopus, but the animal behavior that they get is really incredible. The, like, the things the octopus does that they catch on film oh, is really uh, cool. Uh, oh, this is going on my list. Is it on Netflix? Yes, <laughs> it is. Cool. there had been a class in college called like immersive octopus studies, I would have changed my major. <laughs> I, w I would have studied that. I'd be a marine biologist right now. <laughs> if you could go live among the octopi, octopuses and just observe them for a semester at sea. Or beach. A semester at beach, even better. <laughs> semester at, semester beach. at beach. A beach. I snorkeled with an octopus once. It was pretty pretty cool. Oh, that is so cool. Just hung out with it for a while. Was it moving around? It was on the, it was on the, the sea floor, probably about like eight feet deep or something. So oh, yeah. I'd like be at the top, and then I'd swim down a little bit, hang out, cool. go back up for some air. Mm. And it was like, had like one eye open watching me. You see them scuba <laughs> one diving eye on open. Uh, Stay over there. What's that? You Seven? see them scuba diving on Vancouver Island a lot? You can see the giant Pacific octopus. Like Oh, yeah. This one was a small they were, octopus. It was a, I've only seen tiny ones. Yeah. They're still called GPO, whatever. GPOs. Um, GPO. But I don't know. They're all tucked into their little micro caves. And cool. It's super cool. Uh. Speaking of caving, though, we were talking about deep caving. Has anybody seen the film The Rescue? The rest. Is that yeah. the Chilean no, it's mining in, one? Nope. nope. Close. It's um uh it's in 
I'm forgetting which country it's in. Oh, it's Nat Geo? It's in Thailand. And the, uh, oh. I don't, yeah, it's Nat Geo. Nat Geo, okay. Uh, the cave, this cave gets flooded and this like boys soccer team is like in the cave. And I remember hearing about that when I was Yeah, yeah it was a big news story. Uh, yeah. But they had to bring in like, a, they brought in like a team of hobbyist uh, cave divers to help the Thai Navy SEALs with the rescue. Wow. And oh my gosh. The story is absolutely insane. So people were trapped? Yeah. Yes. Oh. Because they were like in a part of the cave that was still dry, mm -hmm. but their the exits, every way out was flooded. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like the monsoon season came wow. earlier than expected, and it's like a cave Terrifying. that people, these kids like played in all the time growing up. And, oh my gosh. But they were like, a few kilometers in. That's terrifying. Yeah. But the way that it's an incredible story. It's intense. Oh man, I need to make a list on my phone. Might be like PG-13. <laughs> there's a, that made me think of another movie. It's called Diving Into the Unknown. And it's about deep cave divers and about them diving in, I think it was Finland. And about a, a thing that went wrong. And it's a documentary and it's, it's oh. a bizarre movie. It shows the extremeness of these people's hobbies, diving down to like 140 meters in a cave. No. Wow. <laughs> no. <Yeah. laughs> like that's like really, really deep in open water, like but in a cave? really cool, but no. No, it was not a good That's it's what not a little cool ROVs movie. are for, yeah, little big AUVs, time. little underwater drones. Just build one of those in your free time, people. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I recommend watching that one, Diving into the Unknown. That's amazing. Some people like to be in the action. Yeah, <laughs> that's but that's that's too much action for me. I went on like a little like mountaineering documentary kick recently. Oh yeah, yeah. There's one about this guy and I think he's from Canada and uh, he was doing crazy like free solo ice climbing. And oh wow! It's super oh my intense. Gosh. Wait, I scary. Just what you to, said. Holy yeah, moly! To add to the list of things we would never do. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, yeah. Any type of scaling ice is just not. Mm -mm. Here's a question I don't know if anybody has the answer to, but someone's saying that they recently watched a clip on, I guess, the Nautilus Live channel um, that had a deep steria jellyfish in it with an isopod inside, and is wondering, is that relationship symbiotic or more parasitic? I don't know. Yeah, that was my mm. clip. Was that? Oh, yeah? Yeah. Ooh. That's cool. I, haven't, I don't think I've seen that. Yeah. I think, unless we had two. Might have had two. Two... I think we only have the one. Seems like a rare clip. Yeah. I don't know. That's interesting. Also, Trevor and Ashton are the best. Somebody put that in there. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Happy Earth Day, everyone. Oh, yeah. Uh, Happy Earth Day. It is Earth Day. Happy Earth Day to all of our viewers. What percentage of the Earth is ocean? What's the official number? 70-ish. Most. A lot. <laughs> Most percent. Majority. <laughs> what did you say, Lynette? 70-ish. 70-ish? It's definitely, uh, yeah, I agree with that number. <laughs> and Lynette, do you remember like how much of the ocean is unmapped? Is it like 80%? It's something crazy. Yeah. They always told me. Depends on the resolution. <laughs> oh, yeah, because they're counting like 
ancient nautical maps too, yeah. like hand drawn things. Yeah. <laughs> hand drawn? Yeah. Satellite altimetry. Even like if you count that, it's all mapped, right? Mapping, but, mapping's yeah. gonna be like uh, like filmmaking. I mean, like, you know, where you're like, I have this, and I filmed in HD the first time ever, like a snow mm -hmm. leopard, and then a few years later, someone's like, in 4K, the first time ever, a snow <laughs> leopard, in yeah. 8K. Oh, a snow yeah. leopard. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you can never, you gotta That's always true. up it. Yeah, you, know? exactly. you can't, you can't exactly. have like a stock footage catalog of like old <laughs> clips that just look old. And That's so true. You gotta keep that updated. We only have AI of like <laughs> three cubic feet of the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know what the file type is called. <laughs> oh, you're talking about like, like the resolution. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like if we we're going to do some like virtual reality thing. Oh, I said AI. I'm sorry. On my computer. I'm going to stop talking now. <laughs> what's what's the uh what's the pinnacle what's the like the best resolution people are mapping with these days, Lynette? Okay. Um I think typically for near shore like in shallow waters that we really want to map well for safety of navigation and things like that um uh what's the resolution i don't know you can a meter maybe okay yep so yeah. each each like m each square meter has its own like depth Pixel. information within the yeah this, the it depends map. on depth. yeah i mean yeah. you could do like you can do better than that but yeah. yeah, quarter meter maybe. Well. Yeah. And what uh, resolution have we been getting on when we're mapping like three thousand to like six thousand meters on this cruise? I think we usually do hundred meter. Hundred meter. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're in deep water, you can't ping very fast um, because you have to ping and then wait for it to travel down to the seafloor and then wait for it to come back and that takes maybe six to ten seconds um, so you really can't ping very fast and we're usually traveling pretty fast like 10 knots which is like five meters per second so if you're tr like pinging once every 10 seconds traveling five meters per second, like you're not getting a lot of coverage yeah. really on the seafloor, like where your bottom detects are sure. happening. Yeah. That's true for how deep it is here. We're like booking it, yeah. aren't we? Yep. We're just getting enough of an idea to know where to dive. Yep. Gotcha. I forget if it was Dan or Josh, but one of the ROV pilots last year had an analogy like, you got, you got 100 square meters and we have a map, so we think we know what we're gonna see but then they're like, have you ever been to a monster truck show? <laughs> Where they're like, because <laughs> <laughs> it's like you could have a, you could go to an arena and there's like a foot football field size space, but they could build mounds and stack cars and you yeah. just never really know what the details are of that yeah. space. Yeah, totally. <laughs> have you ever been to a monster truck show? Have yeah. you <laughs> ever been to a monster? First off, it's a rally. The <laughs> so lexicon is monster truck rally. Oh, excuse as, us. Yeah, excuse, yeah. So I, as, a, as a kid, I did as go to an yeah. indoor monster truck rally, and I've also, uh, as an adult, filmed a monster truck rally. Have you really? Uh, I have. How did that go? <laughs> it was loud. I wish I had brought, like, I wish I had, some better headphones, but um, <laughs> what was just the like topography the topography like? It, yeah, <laughs> there was jumps and cars, cars stacked, four crush cars stacked on top of each other. All nice. that, you know, and it was oh, inside yeah. a football stadium. That sounds Wouldn't amazing. Mind going to a rally? That sounds fun and dangerous, but you know, <laughs> you know, everybody has their hobbies. <laughs> it's not at the top of your list, Shelby. No, <laughs> as a spectator, it's not that dangerous. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's actually kind of fun, except Here's a good one. smelling all the diesel fumes. Oh, yeah. Would I you mean, ever dangerous for the people fumes. driving. <laughs> Would you ever do a demolition derby as, like, a driver? Oh, oh totally, oh, yeah. What's demolition yeah. derby? 100%. Yes. When I was younger, I would have said yes, and I'm I not have to Google this. <laughs> but, uh, you must see a few demolition derbies demolition. when you're traveling all these state fairs. Yes. Yeah. Derby. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like Wait, so much fun. Wait, you don't know what fun. that is? Uh-uh, what's demolition derby? Oh. Like, hit to pass? Figure eights? Demolition derby is... um. 
Oh, this looks dangerous too. It's just like you you get a beat up car and you like paint it up with your friends <laughs> and then you get put a roll cage in it and then you just all these cars go into like a dirt field and they just crash into each other until you're the last car running. Oh, oh like, you're what? talking that one. You're talking the one that is the last car running. <laughs> yeah. Survival. Yeah. Well, I've yeah. seen the, I've seen the hit like the other kind of full contact racing. Oh. Like the hit to pass or oh. figure eights, but like, I've never seen. You can pit maneuver. Yeah, totally. You have to pit maneuver. Oh, you're yeah. not allowed to, if you pass them without touching them. You have to. You're told to go back. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. That sounds like roller derby, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, roller derby isn't. <laughs> and figure eights. I don't know how people keep track of how many laps the cars have done. Someone's got to keep track of that, right? They're all like mixing in with each other, and it's insane. Should I get some volunteers to keep keep count? Everyone <laughs> counts their car, yeah. I've never seen that hit to pass thing. I've never even heard of that. What? Oh, that's totally no. a classic at the racetrack near Sounds like a Canadian thing, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen the demolition derby. Like, we we would call that a demolition derby. I've never oh, heard okay. of demolition derby to destroy all the cars. Oh yeah, it's. Looks like it'd be bad for your back and your neck. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Do they wear like protective gear? They wear, yeah, they okay, probably good. wear like. I mean, I, I mean, it's probably not. I'm sure there's a scale of yeah. how safe they are. Exactly. Not, but, yeah. You know, like a neck brace and a full face helmet, hopefully. Uh -huh. I almost bought a car to jump, but by the time we got to the place that was selling it, it was already gone. Aww. We're like, we'll be there. Okay. Yeah. And then. Where were you going to jump a car, Trevor? Logging roads. How did I know you're gonna say that? <laughs> and then, do, were you gonna like weld the roll cage into it? I hope. No, no. Is this teenage Trev? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> when your bones are still made of rubber. <laughs> and your prefrontal cortex is not fully developed. Yeah. You got a bike helmet. It's fine. <laughs> you're gonna be a great dad, Stephen. <laughs> Think of your prefrontal cortex. <laughs> not fully developed. Not that you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you just lack the ability to see the consequences of your actions. <laughs> Speak for yourself, Dad. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put demoli demolition derby on my list next to like bull fight or bull rider, whatever that rodeo stuff is. I want to see the one of those too. Put that on my list. I miss that one. Somebody said Canadian Demolition Derby. You have to signal turns and have to apologize at the end. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Is They're that just saying Canadians are Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> As a stereotype. <laughs> Got it. I didn't even know that was a thing people say about Canadians, that they're like just super polite, and I didn't know that was like a thing. A status update almost forgot. Do that right now.
It's going to be a pretty sunset tonight with all those clouds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't even see that view go up. Thanks, Stephen. When we launch again, we're just diving in a different spot on the same seamount, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. We're going to be diving closer to the summit. Okay. Are you okay going the same speed through this part of the winch, Trevor, or do you no, want me to slow, slow down? down? Okay. okay. Ten is fine. All right. Try to keep it like there. that speed, whatever that speed is. Locked in. That might be twelve. What are we at? Thirteen? Uh, Thirteen, fourteen. Oh, I almost forgot to follow up on way long ago conversation um, when we were talking about what you wanted to be when you were sort of younger and the person who thought they were going to be an archaeologist. Um, they said the site that they ended up digging on when they were six was a trading site for early settlers and Native Americans, and they found a shell trade bead. And now they're a blogger, um, sort of a writer, public educator, um, but they watch a lot of Time Team on YouTube, um, and they may get into archaeology as a volunteer in the next few seasons. So, looks like hmm, they still cool. try to stay a little close by. That's awesome. Forgot to say that earlier. Now I'm going to post this update. <laughs> Look at the current taking a victory lap there. Oh yeah, it's really spinning around. 
It's like a clock, reverse clock. Has anybody traveled anywhere that they could like continue to go back to? I know some people who like once they've been to one place once, they don't really want to go back. Has there been anywhere that you've traveled that's been so amazing, so great that like you would go back like over and over again, like without hesitation? I'd go visit Ashton in New Orleans. <laughs> there you go. Come hang out. Open invite. Not to the world, just to the people that I know. We've already talked about this, Ashton. I liked going to Vermont so much that I moved there. Mm. Oh. I have heard Vermont is gorgeous. Especially in the fall, I've heard. Definitely. Can that really be called visiting? I mean, I, I'm saying I went there so much, and then I moved there. Oh, I see. Mm. Hey, Steve, can you look at uh, the cabinet 60 hertz cam for me, please? That's that monitor? That's the black one, yeah. Roger. Thanks. I tend to travel to visit people, so I end up going back to the same places multiple times if those are where the people are. So. You want to yeah. be where the people are? Yeah, I <laughs> want to be where my friends are. <laughs> <laughs> get that. <laughs> I could probably go back to Kyoto mm. a couple of times. So peaceful there. Very pretty, too. Oh, you totally sold me on it when you were talking about it. Where was I that know. story? I missed it. Kyoto. Kyoto. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Japan's definitely on the travel bucket list. <laughs> it's absolutely worth it. Very, very nice. Have you been, Trevor? I have, yeah. Oh, Years yes. ago. Same. Well, not that long. It was like 2019, but it was still great. Probably went 15 years ago. Oh, yeah. Okay. That, was, <laughs> that was a while. It's like a whole no different like sure, era. Please, yeah. <laughs> there was a town over there that was considered the sister city of the town I lived in in Canada. Oh. Morioka. Oh, that's cool. And they yeah. had a uh, indigenous, uh, Canadian indigenous totem pole there, so that was pretty cool, put up by the mayor of my town. That is cool. That is cool, yeah. And of course, rode the bullet train, which is always of a good course. time. Of course. Gotta ride the bullet train. Did you feed the deer that bowed to you? No. I don't oh. know. I don't even know about that. Oh, yes. If you ever go to Kyoto, there's just this park where they just roam free, these deer. And you can get these little, I don't know, I don't know what it is that they eat, some like little pellet things that you can buy. And, um, okay. you want me to stop? You like, they'll like bow if you bow to them and then you give them a piece of probably just, you know, over time training by <laughs> people coming in. But it's very, very cool. That sounds amazing. It is. It was a very cool experience indeed. I always want to go see the animals. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Somebody's wondering why the lasers on Hercules are green. I don't know. <laughs> I'll come back to that in a